Hello, magandang hapon po sa inyo lahat. I'm Sheila CR, your moderator. We'll start at uh, exactly two o'clock. So um, just sit back and relax and uh, see you all at uh, two o'clock. For all attendees, uh, you may have noticed that your microphone is muted. So wag po kayong mabahala. We are doing this uh, to prevent any background noise, but uh, rest assured that you can still participate in the discussion. See you at two. Hi, good afternoon everyone. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Welcome to our webinar series where we tackle development issues based on data and evidence. I'm Sheila Siyar and I will be your moderator. Before we start, uh, may we have uh, your attention on our house rules. So for all attendees, uh, you may have noticed that your microphone is muted upon entry. And uh, we do this to prevent any background noise. But this doesn't mean that you cannot join in the discussion. So to join the open forum, just use the chat box, which is located at the lower part of your screen. Just type your name and your affiliation and your question and send it to everyone. I repeat, send it to everyone and not to a particular person. I will read your question during the open forum. And since we have limited time, please make your questions concise. And for our viewers on Facebook, you are also very much welcome to um, participate in the open forum, just type your question in the comment section. Again, a warm welcome to all of you, to our viewers on Facebook. Uh, we now have uh, more than 300 viewers on Facebook and to all our participants on uh, WebEx. Uh, latest count is around uh, 
is more than 300. So we now have more than uh, 300 uh, WebEx um, participants. So this webinar is the third and last of the three part webinar series on promoting good local governance in the Philippines, jointly organized by the Philippine Institute for Development Studies or PIDS and the Department of Interior and Local Government or DILG. And for this webinar, we will be uh, talking about the community based monitoring system and how local governments are using it in local development planning and program implementation. And to formally open our event this afternoon and share her insights about the topic, may I call on the president of the PIDS, Dr. Celia Reyes. Mamsel? Thank you, Sheila. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, before we start, I'd like to acknowledge the presence of the following officials uh, from our partner uh, institution, the ILG. Uh, we have DLG, the Assistant Director Alfonso Marali Jr., um, SLGPPM Project Manager, Mr. Richard Villacorte. And uh, we, we're also um, fortunate to have with us uh, some of our local chief executives, Mayor Oscar Moreno of Cagayan de Oro City, Mayor Jesus Florencio Vargas of Abulog, Cagayan, Mayor Milagros Faderanga and Vice Mayor um, George uh, Fegalan of Banton Romblon, Mayor Nathaniel Escobar of Burgos, Ilocosur, Mayor Virginia Ferrandos of Carmen Davao del Norte, Mayor Dean Villa of Larena Siquijor, Vice Mayor Vincent Navarosa of Bacao Aklan, Mayor Roberto Uy of Liloy Zamboanga del Norte, Mayor Cesar Robles of Panganiban Catanduanes, Mayor Acela Sacramed of Sanchez Mira Cagayan, Mayor William Lim of San Narciso Zambales, um, Councilor Marvin Santos of Paranaque City and also from um, the government agencies, we have um, SEPO Executive Director, Mr. Merwin Salazar, uh, DILG Provincial Director, John Cerezo, DILG Provincial Director, Noel Duarte, BLGF Deputy Director, Jose Arnold Tan, LGA Executive Director, Thelma Vecina, CHED Commissioner, Dr. Alias Brillantes, and um, DTI Regional Director, um, Rodrigo Aguilar. And from the academe, uh, we have with us this afternoon Dean Pamela Isa Cabemaric of um, Cavite State University's College of Criminal Justice and Dean Stanley Fernandez of the University of Makati's College of Governance and Public Policy. Um, of course, we also have with us um, um, PIDS Board of Trustees and former PIDS President Dr. Gilberto Llanto. And from the CSO, uh, we have Local Government Development Foundation National Coordinator, Dr. Antonio Avila Jr. and um, a good friend development through Active Women Networking Foundation Executive Director, Celia Flor, and League of Cities of the Philippines Deputy Executive Director, Maria Veronica Hiposis. Uh, we're also glad to have our colleagues from the national and local governments and representatives from the academe, civil society, and the private sector in this afternoon's virtual seminar. We also welcome our Facebook viewers to this webinar. This is the third and last of the three-part webinar series organized by the Philippine Institute for Development Studies in the Department of the Interior and Local Government. The first webinar was conducted last July 16, where we discussed about local development planning and budgeting among municipalities. Then we had the second one on July 23, which featured the current incentives and award system for local government units particularly the Performance Challenge Fund and Seal of Good Local Governance. We're happy with the turnout of both webinars. We were able to gather and hear the thoughts of participants coming from various sectors. Thanks to our DILG counterparts, particularly the Office of Undersecretary Maribel Sassendoncillo, Director Ana Bonago and her staff, and Mr. Richard Villacorte and his team for their all-out support in this joint undertaking. Today, we will feature another presentation by PIDS Research Fellow, Dr. Justin Jokno Sikat, and former Supervising Research Specialist, Catherine Adaro. This time, they will be discussing the research paper titled The Community Based Monitoring System as a Local Planning Tool, which they co authored with research analyst Rick Simadawi. Um, as many of you know, the CBMS is close to my heart because it is something that I developed in 1993 as part of a PIDS project on the micro-impacts of macroeconomic adjustment policies. It has been a long journey before it has been institutionalized by Republic Act 11315. 
It's a time for local government units who persevered in implementing a monitoring system that addresses their data needs using their own resources. The CBMS has been adopted by local government in the Philippines in, since uh, 2000. And as of June 30 uh, this year, it has um, covered about uh, 1,111 municipalities, um, 114 cities, and 31,485 barangays in 78 provinces with the capacity building assistance provided by the CBMS network based at the De La Salle University and the Department of Interior and Local Government. Um, not just here at the central office, uh, the Bureau of Local Government Development, but also our, their counterparts in the regions and provinces. Um, in terms of its use at the local level, the PIDS study found that majority of the municipalities surveyed use the CBMS as a major data source in preparing or updating their ecological profiles. Ecological profiling is a crucial step in formulating the comprehensive development plans of local government units which is mandated under the Local Government Code of 1991. Aside from ecological profiling, respondent LGUs also use CBMS in budget preparation and priority setting. Of course, we all know that more recently, we have seen how these LGUs have used CBMS to respond to the COVID pandemic by using their CBMS data to identify eligible beneficiaries for the social amelioration program, distribution of food packs, and other assistance programs. While there are positive feedbacks about CBMS, the studies show that there are still areas for improvement. Among the major issues identified include the ir irregularity of data collection in LGUs and the scarcity of budget for data collection and hiring of CBMS personnel. We hope that these gaps will be addressed with the passage of the CBMS law. Under the new law, data, gather data collection will be synchronized and must be done every three years. It also requires that financial and technical assistance be extended to LGUs, particularly those classified under fourth to fifth, fourth to sixth class uh, income class municipalities. There's also a need to revisit and enhance the development planning processes of LGUs, particularly on the use of CBMS for ecological profiling. We will hear more of this later from the presentation of Dr. Sikat and Ms. Adaro. Also this afternoon, we are pleased to have with us Dr. Aleli Sabrevinas, Associate Professor at the De La Salle University School of Economics, Congresswoman Dalia Loyola, representative of the 5th District of Manila, of Cavite, I'm sorry, and who was actually a very active um, advocate of CBMS when she was the mayor of um, uh, Carmona, um, and Mayor Jasmine Angeli Maligaya Bautista of Magallanes Cavite, who will share their insights, comments, and success stories about the CBMS. We have an excellent set of speakers today, so I would like to encourage all of you to stay until the end and actively participate in the open forum later on. Once again, let me thank the ILG and its officials for their continued support in organizing this webinar series. We look forward to having more collaborations with you in the future. And let me also thank the PIDS webinar team led by Dr. Sheila CR for organizing this weekly webinars to allow us to disseminate more widely our research findings. I now give back the floor to our moderator, Sheila. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mansell. Now let us listen to the presentation and allow me to give a brief profile of our uh, uh, speakers. Our uh, uh, main presenter is Dr. Justine Sika, who is an who is an assistant professor at the Verata School of Business, University of the Philippines, and currently on secondment as a research fellow at the PIDS. She has a PhD in business administration, is a PhD economics candidate, has two master's degrees, one in uh, management and the other in economics, all from the University of the Philippines, Diliman. Her academic and professional experience is focused on the various aspects of the public, uh, of, uh, the public sector and public policy. And co-presenting with Dr. Sika this afternoon is her co-author, Ms. Catherine uh, Adaro, a former staff of PIDS. She is currently the Monitoring, Evaluation, and Learning Coordinator for the Asia Region of the Alliance for the, for the Biodiversity, NCIAT, a CG, CGIAR Center. And from uh, 2016 to 2019, she was a Supervising Research Specialist at TIDS, and was involved in research projects on local governance, such as the assessment of the bottom-up budgeting program and the baseline study on policy governance gaps for the LGSF AM 
program. Her research interests include local governance, climate change, and education. Here now are Dr. Sikat and Ms. Adara for their presentation. Thank you very much for that, Sheila. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, yes, we thank so many people for this. Um, this webinar, as well as the, the study team, our co-author, Ms. Ritsi Madawin, Lucy Melendez, Angel Castillo, mem members of the team, as well as those, those from the project management office under uh, Director Richard Luñacorte, A.A. Salazar, and Glenn Miranda. So I'm pleased to present with you the results of our study, assessing the community-based monitoring system as a tool in local development planning. To give you a bit of a context regarding this, this study was conducted as part of the baseline study on fiscal and governance gaps in municipalities. As um, Dr. Reyes mentioned earlier, we presented the results of the study last uh, July 16, and I will re be repeating some of the results um, briefly uh, in a bit. But in sum, the results of the survey of 1,373 municipalities showed that first, in 2017, there was at least a 166.9 billion fiscal gap for the infrastructure services that we focused on, um, municipal roads, primary evacuation centers, and rural health units. At the same time, the baseline study also focused on the development planning processes of these 1,373 municipalities. Though we recognize that there are more than 1,400 municipalities, we were not able to include in our survey the municipalities that came from the autonomous region of Muslim Mindanao, because at the time they were undergoing transition in their governance structure. But uh, in the case for the remaining municipalities we were able to survey, we found that there is a need to update local plans for more than half of these, as well as strengthen the identification, prioritization, monitoring, and evaluation of investment programs. So my our presentation today um, has a very simple outline. We'll be describing briefly what the CBMS is. We'll show you the scope and methodology, the results and findings, as well as the recommendations. Now, an overview of the CBMS. It was developed in the early 1990s under the micro impacts of microeconomic adjustment policies, MIMAP project that Dr. Reyes mentioned earlier. It is a diagnostic tool to assess poverty in the barangay municipal city and provincial level. And it also aims to provide policymakers and program implementers a good information base for tracking the impacts of macroeconomic reforms and various policy shocks. Now, uh, this is just a, a simple categorization of the indicators and data that can be found in the CBMS. Um, here we have, if you look at the bullets, there would be income and livelihood, housing indicators, health and nutrition, education, access to basic services and facilities, access to programs, political and community participation, migration, climate change, disaster preparedness, security and peace and order, and other uh, community specific uh, indicators. Now, we have very simple research questions. The first is, is the CBMS used in local development planning? Actually, as I mentioned earlier, this is a rider to the survey we conducted. So the question that we had really was, what is the primary data set tool that your local municipality used in the most recent development planning process? So this, the survey was conducted in 2019, and we asked the municipalities um, in your most recent uh, development planning process, uh, what what was the primary data set to use? And contrary to the DILG prescribed RAPIDS and LDIS, a uh, majority came out to say that it was the community-based monitoring system that they used in the most recent development planning process that they conducted. And mind you, the ones that we had interviewed for this were the municipal planning team members, particularly the municipal economic and development officer, uh, the municipal engineer, and the budget uh, the municipal budget officer and or accountant, as well as a representative from the CSO. Um, so, so that's why this is an offshoot of that particular study. So we, we went on to probe a bit further. If yes, how is it used? And does it serve any other purpose? So therefore, our objectives are very straightforward. They follow the questions that we have. Uh, the objective is to establish if the 
CBMS is used, and in fact it is by majority, and determine if and how CBMS indicators are used in planning and identify areas of improvement for the planning process with CBMS. Now our methodology, data, and scope. So we use the mixed methods approach, uh, descriptive research, and we analyze the primary data we collected from the LGSF-AM baseline study survey of municipalities. Now, if you would please bear with me, um, I had presented this back in July 16, but this is the general relationship between local government plans. And this is more for the benefit of those who are not familiar. I know we have a lot of representatives from the local government, so, so I'm sure you're very much familiar with this, but for the benefit of the others um, here, there are several plans that local governments should are mandated to draft. And the longest term of which would be the long-term framework plan, also known as the comprehensive land use plan. So this one has a validity of nine years. Now from this, ideally, would come the multi-year, multi-sectoral development plan, which would be valid for six years, which is known as the comprehensive development plan or the CDP. And our survey focused on this particular plan, the planning process of the comprehensive development plan. Now, also for the benefit of those who are not familiar, uh, in the Philippines, local chief executives serve for three years. So um, the assumption or the ideally, there would be a term-based agenda of each newly incumbent uh, local chief executive, and they would come up with their executive legislative agenda that should be called from the comprehensive development plan. Now, from the comprehensive development plan, going back to it, this, as I'll be sharing with you later, this shows the vision or the goal of where the local development, local government plans to be in, in six years. And they draft based on this and the gap of the reality, uh, programs, projects, and activities that would help close the gap between their vision or their goal and the current situation on the ground. So the programs, projects, and activities should be identified in the implementation instrument called the Local Development Investment Program. And this one is valid for three years. Now, as in our the case of our national budget, um, our budget is drafted annually, the same with local governments. So the challenge is, well, not really a challenge, but there has to be uh, further prioritization of the programs, projects, and activities uh, to be contained in the annual investment program. So, so a local chief executive would typically break down the priority programs, projects, and activities into annual um, bite-sized ones. So, so, so for example, if, if um, a local government uh, official or a local chief executive wants to build uh, three kilometers of roads in the next three years during their term, they could break it down by building one kilometer of road a year and identify that in the annual investment program so that it will get the corresponding funding in the annual budget. Now, if you could please bear with me, I'd like to share briefly the results of our um, survey of the baseline study, local government support fund assistance to municipalities. We asked municipalities that we surveyed if they had the comprehensive land use plan, if they had a CDP, and if they had an LDIP. And interesting, about 91.3% uh, of the municipalities we surveyed came to say that they did in fact have a CLUP. But when we examined the CLUP more closely, since it should be valid for nine years, um, with regards to it being current. So we conducted this in 2019. So we asked, we looked at the validity of the CLUP. From 2018, we added and subtracted eight years and considered that to be current. Um, and what we found was that only 64 of the 1,254 uh, municipalities that said they had a CLUP were in fact current. So this is just about 5% of those who claim to have CLUP were in fact current. Now, when we go to the results for the comprehensive development plan, here, um, only about 89.1% of all of the municipalities said that they had a CDP. But when we looked at the figures more closely, and in this case, it should be valid for six years, we looked at plus or minus 2018. 
if the valid if the dates of the CDP fell within that range, it would be considered current. Only about 40.4% of those who said yes that we do, we do have CDP were in fact current. So finally, for the implementation instrument, the LDIP, which is valid for three years, we did the same exercise. We asked them, do you have an LDIP? And 97.7% said yes. And then when we looked at the, the validity or the currency, um, plus or minus two years, because it should be valid for three years, what we found was that only 31.2% of those who said yes were in fact current. So these were very important findings, which is why I was happy to read uh, yesterday that um, there were calls to, to improve planning, especially in the face of, of COVID, uh, uh, especially at the local government level. And on top of that, um, because of the anticipated possible increase in ERA, coming 2022 because of the Mandanas ruling. So, so all the more now is the perfect time to improve and enhance the planning processes of local governments. So let me focus now on the comprehensive development plan um, process. So this is, this, these five steps here are what we focused on in our survey. So um, the first step here is to organize and mobilize the planning team. The second step is to revisit existing plans, vision, mission, and sectoral goals. The third step is to prepare the ecological profile to depict the current state of the locality and a list of programs, projects, and activities to address the gap between the said state and the vision. The fourth step is to draft the LDIP as well as the AIP, which, which contains the prioritized PPAs. And finally would be the implementation instruments needed, such as capacity building, for the drafting of the CDP as well as monitoring and evaluation of the LDIP. Now we will be focusing on steps two and three. Um, and still I'm trying to give you a context because it is in ecological profiling that the CDMS is used. So in the next slide, uh, let me zoom this a bit. Um, I know it's, this is very vast, very complicated, but our study just focuses on this particular area. Okay, so apparently I can't zoom, but in any case, if you look at this encircled area here, this is where our study focuses on, this encircled area. The second step to the CDP planning, which is setting or revisiting the vision of a local government. And the third step in CDP planning, which is determining the current reality. Because of course, in order for you to be able to address um, any problems or issue you have to recognize and really have evidence as to what the current status is uh, in your locality. So this is where the CBMS comes in. The CBMS, I'll go to the next slide, is figures in here, the determining current reality. So under the CBMS, uh, the DILG guidelines says that you would gather and gather data and information based on the identified vision element or descriptors of the five development sectors economic, social, environment, infrastructure, and institutional development. And from this, um, once the data has been gathered, it would be validated through consultations and comparisons with higher and lower level local government units. And that would be the basis for um, drafting the ecological profile. So what we found here is that a majority of local government municipalities we surveyed use the CBMS in identifying the current reality. So, um, as I mentioned, local development planning requires the drafting of an ecological profile to depict current realities facing the LGU. The basis of identifying the necessary programs, projects, and activities that will bridge the gap from current, vision, current reality to the vision. At present, the LDIS, or the RAPIDS, is the prescribed data set to be used. However, the survey results revealed that majority of municipalities that we surveyed indicated they use the, the CBMS as the primary tool for data gathering and in the preparation of their ecological profile. So now uh, our colleague, uh, Kata, will present the results of uh, the study. Thank you. Thank you, Justine, and good afternoon, everyone. 
I will now be sharing with you highlights of the results of the study, as well as some findings from a related PIDS study conducted by Dr. Celia Reyes, Mr. Arkin Arboneda, and Ms. Rita Vargas on evidence-based local planning and budgeting using the CBMS. For this study, the major question that was asked to the respondents in the LGUs was which data set development tool do they use as the primary source of data for the preparation and or updating their ecological profile in their comprehensive development plans. Results show that although the LDIS or the Local Development Indicator System and the RAPIDS, the Rationalized Planning Indicator System, are the recommended data gathering tools indicated in the DILG's Local Planning Guide, for preparing and updating the CDP. The CBMS was the tool used by majority with a share of 57%. The LDIS and the RAPIDS are still used, but only by a small proportion of respondents. And while other LGUs formulate their own data gathering tools, for instance, there were municipalities that used a mix of RAPIDS and CBMS, which they coined as RCBMS. The RCBMS are used by 4.7% of the total number of LGUs. It should also be noted that there are still some LGUs that do not use any tool in gathering data in formulating their ecological profiles for their CDPs. Other data sources mentioned include the data from PSA or Philippine Statistics Authority or any other available sectoral data from national government agencies. Next slide, please. The CBMS have been adopted by LGU since the year 2000. Over the years, the uptake of LGUs utilizing CBMS as the major source of primary data for their locality increased with spikes in 2010 and 2014 onwards. 2010 was then set as the target year for the national implementation of a core local poverty indicators monitoring system, and the CBMS was the primary tool officially recognized by the then National Statistics Coordination Board, or NSCB, to strengthen the statistical system at the local level. This may explain the spike of ad adoption of CBMS in 2010. Next slide, please. Yeah, in terms of the frequency of data collection, majority, or 58.1%, of the LGUs that use CBMS collect data every three years. Others claim to conduct CBMS data collection every year, while some every five years. These responses have shares of 17.8% and 14.8% respectively. Only a small proportion or 3.9% of the LGU reported to have conducted CBMS only once. It should be noted that the evident irregularity in collecting data can be expected since there is no mandated frequency in the conduct of the CBMS or any other data set development tool. Such an activity depends entirely on the LGU officials' perceived need for such. Next slide, please. Most of the LGUs that claim to have conducted CBMS at least once reported to have collected a budget for such. The Internal Revenue Allotment, or ERA, which is the LGU share of revenues from the Philippine National Government, was identified as the main source of budget for the conduct of the CBMS, regardless of the frequency of conduct. Other sources of CBMS budget identified by respondents include locally generated revenues and grant type funding from the national government agencies. We also recorded these top three other sources of funding for the conduct of the CBMS, namely the 5% Local Disaster and Risk Reduction Management Fund, the 20% Local Development Fund, and the Provincial Fund. Now, why are we highlighting this? This is because we want to explore the legitimacy of using these sources of funds for the conduct of CBMS. For the, for the LDRRM fund, purposes of the fund shall be for the support of disaster risk management activities, such as pre-disaster training programs, post-disaster activities, such as repair and rehabilitation of infrastructure, 
payment of insurance premiums of property and relief and recovery programs. So there is the question of the basis of utilizing this source of fund for the CBMS. In the case of the local development fund, as stipulated in the JMC of the DILG and DBM on its appropriation and utilization, the 20% development fund shall be utilized to develop to development projects such as those on social development, economic development, and environmental management. There were expenditure items not allowed to be charged against the 20% development fund. However, funding for data collection for development planning purposes is not explicitly stated there. So most likely CBMS funding can be approved to be charged from the source since or from the LD, from the 20% LDF since it serves as inputs to the LGU's development plan planning. For the provincial fund, we were not able to explore on what was really meant by provincial funds, but maybe these are locally generated funds raised under the authority of the province and is extended to the LGUs of that province. Next slide, please. The municipal government takes the lead in data collection and processing of CBMS data. Enumerators and field editors are usually locally recruited and trained to correctly and accurately conduct the survey in the barangays. Other LGUs, on the other hand, seek assistance from the staff of the LGUs or personnel of barangays within that LGU. Majority of the respondents identified the Municipal Planning and Development Coordinator or the MPDC as the focal person responsible for the conduct of data gathering in the LGUs. Likewise, staff of the MPDO or the Municipal Planning and Development Office usually do the processing and the analysis of the data collected. This result is expected since the MPDO is the main office in the LGU facilitating the updating and development of the CDP. Thus, the MPDO with the assistance of the municipal planning team or the MPT is instrumental in performing data analysis and transforming this data into information. Just a note here that in terms of processing the data for CBMS, computerized processing software such as the CBMS encoding system statistics simulator and the CBMS natural Natural Resource Database, on, or NDRB, are provided for free to partner LGUs. Next slide, please. The LGUs were also asked which data in the CBMS do they mostly use in developing their ecological profiles. Most of the data of, in the CBMS are reported to be highly utilized by the LGUs, in particular, Data on demography, water and sanitation, and education and literacy were recorded as the most utilized. On the other hand, data on access to programs, climate change, household member who died, and political participation were the least used data items. However, it should be noted that the utilization of certain data items vary depending upon the focus of the vision and development planning of the LGUs. Most data, in the C data items in the CBMS are cross-cutting, thus all are useful for analysis, project formulation, and identification. The, the LGUs also identified other purposes or use of the CBMS data aside from when preparing the ecological profile. Most of the LGUs utilize the CBMS also every time there is a need for setting priority areas or sectors, and also when there is a need for basis for budgeting. The positive implication of this result is that the LGUs consider using data and recognize its importance in many aspects of their decision making. Next slide, please. Majority of the respondents claim that data collected through CBMS once processed and analyzed, enable them to identify priority sectors in their LGUs. So most of them identify through the CBMS data, the urban poor sector, persons with disabilities, farmers and landless workers, children and women, and other sectors. Next slide, please. 
As mentioned earlier, the utilization of certain data items vary depending upon the focus of the vision and development planning of the LGUs. Thus, although CBMS and the other recommended data generating tools are available and has comprehensive and cross-cutting scope of data, some municipalities still identify data items they believe they need as inputs to ecological profiling and planning. More specialized data that are not yet in the CBMS are data on environment, data on land, on road network and infrastructure, on geotagging and maps, data on ICT, data on energy and power, and data on tourism. The identification of these data requirements demonstrate the continuous evolution of data needs for development planning of the local governments. On the other hand, there were still some LGUs that identified data needs that are already in the CBMS. Such are demographic and economic data, climate change, and agriculture. This result may imply that LGUs may need different disaggregation of the already existing data, or perhaps there is a need to capacitate even more the LGU staff on the available data that can be extracted from the CBMS. Next slide, please. Yeah. This slide, along with the two succeeding slides, are some findings of a related PID study by Dr. Reyes, Mr. Arkin Arboneda, and Ms. Rita Vargas on evidence-based local planning and budgeting using the CBMS. So in their study, the team did a desk review of the DILG prescribed guidelines on the local planning process to determine and evaluate data availability and to assess the applicability of the CBMS in addressing data gaps in the local development planning. They also looked into data available from the CBMS that corresponds to indicators of the GAD database or the Gender and Development Database and that of the Sustainable Development Goals or SDGs. Of the 152 indicators needed in the CDP, about 26.3% are available in the CBMS. Among the five sectors in the CDP, majority of the indicators in the social and economic sectors are obtainable from CBMS at 82.6% and 52.6% respectively. Meanwhile, much of the data needs of the CDP are concentrated in the sector of environment and natural resources. However, CBMS can only provide 7% of the data required due to the technical nature of the indicators. Although CBMS also includes environment-related indicators, they lean towards perception of households in relation to current environmental phenomena as opposed to the methodological and scientific process used in the collection of indicators required in the CDP. The LGU GAD database, as stipulated in the JMC or Joint Memo Circular for the guidelines on the localization of the Magna Carta of Women, is established and maintained to serve as basis for gender responsive planning, programming, and policy formulation. The JMC also states that the sex disaggregated data and results of the CBMS may form part of the GAD database. Similar with the CDP, the GAD database also integrates the five development sectors in their list of indicators. The database further requires LGUs to disaggregate their data by sex. So a large portion of data needed in the GAD database is concentrated in the social development sector. In this case, CBMS is able to provide a third of the data requirement. Likewise, the CBMS data can also satisfy one third of the data needs for GAD indicators in the infrastructure sector. Next slide, please. In the Philippines, the SDGs are monitored through various nationally available indicators identified by the Philippine Statistics Authority. Although many indicators available for monitoring have either baseline or historical data, disaggregation of these data are very few. According to the study, only a third of these indicators have breakdown by location or by sex. The CBMS offer a huge potential in addressing these gaps in data availability 
and granularity in some indicators, particularly those that involve data encompassing different dimensions of poverty, which are also measured and monitored by the goals of the SDGs. Majority of the available data in the CBMS is concentrated on goal one, no poverty, and goal four, quality education. Since the SDGs are monitored at the national level and primarily uses macro data, the CBMS may not be able to address data gaps related to trade, international relations, national policies, budget, and expenditures. Thus, some indicators stated in goals nine, goals 12 and goal 17 were not adopted at the local level. Also, CBMS do not have environment related indicators similar to that monitored under goal 14, life below water, and goal 15, life on land, as they involve meticulous methodologies not captured by household and barangay profile questionnaires. Next slide, please. Now for the summary of the findings, in terms of dataset tools for ecological profiling, contrary to the DILG planning guidelines prescribing the use of LDIS and RAPIDS, the CBMS is the most frequently used dataset development tool. Further, the CBMS data is used not just for ecological profiling, but also for budget preparations and priority setting. In terms of the regularity of data collection, there was no prescribed regular schedule for ecological profiling, which is why the results show irregularity in data collection for this purpose. To be responsive to the needs of the local government, the collection of data and ecological profiling must be timely and at the same time balances with returns on investment in data collection. Next slide, please. Evidence also shows that fewer municipalities allocate a budget for a regular data collection. And for those that do, a large portion of the allocation is developed to hiring personnel for the conduct of the CBMS. In terms of processing and analyzing CBMS data, there is a small proportion of municipalities that claim to neither process nor analyze the data collected from their municipalities. Though the survey did not probe beyond this response, the anecdotal evidence suggests that not knowing how to proceed with collected data, the LGU sent data to the DLSU AKI CBMS network for processing without any follow-up afterwards. Here are some of the recommendations of the study team in response to these findings. There is a need to review or revisit the prescribed basis for ecological profiling in the local planning process and or reorient the LGU since evidence shows that CBMS is more commonly used than that, that the mandated tools. Also, there were some data items in the LGUs they think they still need in developing and or updating their CDPs but are already available in the CBMS. This response may reflect two things. First, there may be data, but LGUs lack access of information and or they don't know how to access this information. Second, the current form, such as the disaggregation or the levels of the available data may be different from what the LGUs need. That's why they're not able to use them. Uh, on the importance of regular data collection, the recently passed CBMS Act will hopefully address concerns on data collection, processing, and analysis by mandating one, regular LGU data collection to every three years, and two, financial and technical assistance to local governments be provided by the relevant national government agencies, and prioritize four to six class municipalities in the first three years of implementation. The CBMS Act also states that cities and municipalities may keep the CBMS data for planning with guidance from the Philippine Statistics Authority, who is the lead agency in, implementation, in the implementation of the CBMS law. Finally, it must be emphasized that the CBMS is first and foremost a local development planning tool. It was born out of the need to fill data gaps in the past statistical system 
wherein the bulk of reliable and relevant information was released irregularly and often too aggregated for further analysis and monitoring. Whether or not policymakers would like to use the CBMS for other programs, such as targeting, its role as a data set development tool for local development planning must remain. Yeah. I'll end my presentation there. Thank you very much. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank the PEDS management for giving me the chance to co-present this study. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much, Justine and Katha, for your uh, very informative presentation. We have been getting inquiries on how to get um, a copy of uh, the presentation of our speakers. Uh, we will um, post it on, we will post the e-file on our website and we will uh, uh, give you the link um, after the webinar. And um, at the same time, uh, we will email you, uh, we will email the link to all our um, WebEx participants and our Facebook viewers. Okay, so to have a balanced uh, perspective on the issues uh, surrounding the, the uh, use of the CBMS, we invited three discussants, one from the academe and two from the local government. And they will give uh, their comments on the study's findings and recommendations. And they will also share their insights on how we can improve the, the design and the conduct of the CBMS. Our first discussant is Dr. Aleli Sobrevinias, Associate Professor and Assistant Dean for Research and Advanced Studies at the School of Economics of the La Salle University, Manila. She obtained her PhD in Applied Economics from the University of Antwerp in Belgium, and her research interests include poverty, international migration, development economics, and the use of the community-based monitoring system data. Here now is Dr. Aleli uh, Sobrevinius for her comments. Aleli? And can I uh, confirm if you can now see my slides? Uh, it's okay. Yes, it's there now. And could you please um, turn okay. on your? Oh, okay. Turn on your. Okay, it's, it's now turned on, on, although we can okay. see you. Okay. Can oh, you yeah. see me now? Yes, okay. we can see you now. Yes. Go ahead, okay. Alexi. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I hope you are all doing well. And before I proceed with my discussion, let me thank PIDS and uh, the ILG for inviting me uh, to this webinar. Now, this is a great opportunity for me. I'm thankful for this uh, uh, activity as well. Um, the topic is very much interesting for me as well, personally, because I've worked with uh, CBMS Network under the De La Salle University Aki. Uh, for several years so it's really close to my heart the topic is very close to my heart so uh, what i can share with you maybe are those things that i have learned and that i have experienced as a researcher uh, uh, of cbms network as well as the things that i have been doing recently because um my current research interest at the moment as a professor of the la salle university is also in line with um poverty and community-based monitoring system. So uh, even my doctoral research is actually a uh, research where I use CBMS data. So uh, close to my heart talaga to. So let me uh, proceed no? uh, by congratulating as well the uh, researchers for coming up with this research, which provides a good baseline in understanding the extent to which CBMS has been utilized by local governments in their local planning. Um, I strongly believe that the main questions that the researchers uh, are, try are trying to address in their research are the same questions that have been uh, uh, asked several times previously. Even the CBMS network have, has, has been very interesting to, to know whether LGUs are in fact using this uh, tool in their local planning. And I, I guess the national government, the DALG, and even the local governments themselves who spend their resources in, in implementing the system are very much interested to determine whether they have been very useful in, in all their planning uh, activities. Um, as the researchers have explained very well in the paper, so I've seen their paper, um, they have uh, explained very clearly what CBMS is and what, how it is designed. No? Uh, let me just reiterate some of them. Uh, they mentioned that CBMS is designed mainly to address the existing data gaps in diagnosing the extent of poverty at the local level. It aids in determining the causes of poverty, 
in formulating appropriate policies, um, in identifying eligible uh, beneficiaries, and in assessing the impact of policies and programs. Uh, with this in mind, the researchers were able to provide evidence uh, as to whether or not LGUs use CBMS in local development planning and how CBMS has addressed the needs of the local government, including those that are required for the preparation of their comprehensive uh, development plan and ecological profile. So let me share uh, my insights with you when it comes to, is it moving now? Okay, let me share my insights with you when, when it comes to the key results uh, of the study as presented by Dr. Sikat and Ms. Adaro earlier. I'll just summarize this, uh, my comments in six points given my limited time. No? Let me summarize, it, summarize them into these six points. First is that which concerns the frequency of data. Um, second uh, point is on funding the CBMS implementation. The third point is that with regards to data items uh, from CBMS utilized by the, by the LGU. Fourth is on items that are still needed according to the LGU respondents. Um, fifth is on processing and analysis of data. And the last one is on uh, the uses of uh, CBMS uh, data. So let me now proceed with the first uh, key point that I'd like to raise. You know, Based on what they have presented in the paper and what they have highlighted earlier um, in the presentation, uh, the, the research uh, found out that majority of the CBMS implementing LGUs reported that they conducted data, uh, data collection every two years. I think this is not surprising. And in fact, it is what the CBMS network uh, was trying to promote to all local government units because it also coincides with the term of the local chief executives. Uh, at the same time, I also understand that the ILG is uh, recommending the, the adoption of CBMS to coincide with the synchronized local planning and budgeting calendar of uh, the local governments. Um, so this may also influence the frequency of data collection among LGUs. Um, the three-year interval of the CBMS data collection uh, is also what is indicated now in the CBMS Act. Now, now, now with a new law, um, there will be regular and synchronous data collection every three years. So I think, uh, I strongly believe that if this is really done uh, successfully or if, if, if CBMS is conducted regularly in such manner, the CBMS will further prove its uh, usefulness as a tool for monitoring poverty as well as in determining the impact of any intervention that the local governments have implemented in their own localities. Um, the issue of uh, frequency of data collection is actually very much uh, connected to the, se the second issue that I would like to raise here, no? uh, that with, which concerns funding the CBMS implementation. I believe that this is uh, one of the main uh, challenges for LGUs and one of the main reasons as well why uh, there is irregularity in the conduct of CBMS among the LGUs. And as many of you know, especially those who are implementing CBMS, uh, in most cases, the local governments are the ones shouldering the entire cost of, C of CBMS implementation. But of course, um, the, the tools, the CBMS tools that were developed by the CBMS network are provided for free, but they have to spend on training, hiring of enumerators, or even uh, buying those equipment that they need. For example, if they need uh, uh, tablets for data collection or um, uh, computers for processing. No, so th those are the costs that that are uh, um, uh, account for most of the expenditures when it comes to CBMS implementation. And we know for a fact that while there are some LGUs which have the needed resources, because there are richer uh, LGUs with ha which have those funds. There are also some with very limited budget. And given the situation, we have LGUs implementing CVMS for more than one round, but some are even implementing five rounds, some even implementing it only once, and some not at all. So it, it varies across uh, local government units no? because of this important challenge that they are facing. Um, and at the same time, given this, this uh, irregularity uh, and differences in the period that the CBMS is being implemented, um, it's also a challenge if someone or a researcher or a policymaker would want to have an aggregate uh, measure at, at the provincial level or at the regional level, for instance. 
uh, because you cannot, uh, it's, it's, it's difficult to actually uh, uh, aggregate them given the differences in the period that they have. But of course, there are some ways to, to account for that. Um, as I understand it, no, uh, given the enactment of the CBMS law and approval of its IRR, I think this concern regarding the funding will also be addressed. Because uh, with the new law, um, the LGUs that will imp be implementing CBMS will be provided the funding. And the, the cost of implementation will now be included as well in the Annual General Appropriations Act of the Philippine Statistics Authority, uh, DILG, DICT, and the LGUs. When it comes to the data items from CBMS uh, that are utilized by the, by the LGU, um, when it, uh, the researchers found that mo the most highly utilized items are uh, demography, water, and sanitation, education, and uh, literacy. Um, meanwhile, political participation and climate change are among those that are uh, mentioned as least utilized. Um, regarding political participation, which um, in one perspective, I think this is also expected because CBMS is designed mainly for local poverty monitoring and local planning and data on political participation, more particularly questions concerning uh, whether they are registered voter or whether they have voted in the last election. Those information are deemed, uh, less to be likely, uh, less likely to be used by by uh, LGUs for the purpose of local planning, I guess. No? Uh, with regard to climate change, this is something that is also interesting. No, um, it was reported as the least uh, one of the least uh, utilized. I think uh, one of the reasons why the local governments reported this is that. The, the sections on climate change uh, was added to the CBMS household profile questionnaire more recently compared to the other items in the questionnaire. Uh, in particular, uh, the CBMS network included the climate change related questions only in their 2011 uh, uh, version of the household profile questionnaire. And when I checked your figure, the one you presented in the paper, uh, I saw that uh, most of the that around one third, around one third of the LGUs that you covered in your uh, uh, study implemented CBMS before 2011. So probably that may also explain why there were LGUs reporting that they use this information uh, le uh, less. No, although it's not clear to me whether the uh, the LGUs who reported this is the same set of LGUs which implemented CBMS prior to 2011. Um, when it comes to, uh, I think the issue concerning that uh, climate change is also linked with this one, because uh, according to the list of data items that were identified to be missing, according to the LGUs, uh, they also included climate change. And uh, somehow, um, um, I think uh, if they say this, data is missing i would assume that they mean these are exist uh, these are uh, not yet existing at the moment so perhaps these are again the the the, the lgus which use the older version of the household profile questionnaire um since they have no data on climate change because uh, together with climate change and disaster risk um it has been partly addressed by the community based monitoring system network when they revised their uh, questionnaire, uh, the household profile questionnaire and barangay profile questionnaire uh, to incorporate a few questions related to climate change and disaster risk. In fact, there are specific sections in the questionnaire that ask questions concerning this. I'm not so sure, Lang, if they, they're more interested to um, um, more uh, community level information regarding climate change because the questions asked in the uh, in the household profile questionnaire are those co concerning the uh, uh, respondents' perception on changes that they have experienced, for example, in the last eight years. You know? um, okay, so aside from climate change uh, and disaster risk, uh, I'm, I'm uh, actually surprised also to know that they said that demographic data is the most commonly cited uh, missing or, or missing data in, in the CBMS. Um, CBMS can provide 
um, more disaggregated data, even individual or household level data can be generated uh, through the CBMS. So I just uh, uh, quite not sure why this is one of the most commonly uh, referred to as missing uh, items. Um, aside from climate change, disaster risk, demog demographic data, um, they also highlighted that uh, data on road networks and infrastructures and uh, geotagging is, uh, are also the missing items in the questionnaire. Um, for data on road networks and infrastructures, uh, as, uh, as far as I recall and I, as I've seen in the questionnaire of the CBMS, uh, even the latest version, there are already few questions in the BPQ that provide information on the types of roads, uh, road networks that are available in the barangay. So that means it, yeah, they have information on whether they have uh, concrete asphalt or gravel or natural earth surface. Um, for geotagging, perhaps the LGUs that mentioned uh, this one is, are those LGUs uh, which use the traditional uh, paper-based data collection. You know? Uh, as many of you know, no, the, the CBMS now is implementing this, the CBMS app or the CBMS Accelerated uh, profile, Poverty Profiling, which actually is a tablet-based data collection. And it has made, uh, uh, the, the CBMS app has made it possible to actually geotag has, households and facilities which are available in the barangay. Uh, and, and therefore, it's also possible to generate gaps, uh, maps using uh, that tool. No? On processing and analysis of data, um, it's also interesting for me to, to know that um, uh, the researchers found that 16% of the LGUs did not process and 17% did not analyze. So if they did not process it and did not analyze it, that means they did not use it any, anymore. No? They did not use it at, at all. So I agree with uh, with the authors, uh, because this is something that we need to uh, address at the moment, because it may mean uh, a waste of resources, which is in, in itself a problem that CBMS is trying to address, because it, CBMS uh, is designed also to ensure that the limited resources that the LGUs have uh, are properly spent by LGUs. So if the LGUs have already spent money for uh, implementation, for data collection, it, I think it's just proper that they process and analyze and use their data for their uh, for the many purposes, no, for local planning in particular. So I guess this is one area that should be uh, improved, uh, that should be addressed. Um, and I think with the enactment of the CBMS Act, uh, I understand that LGUs now uh, will be mandated to utilize the CBMS generated data in local governance process such as in local planning, investing prog investment programming, budgeting, uh, program implementation, disaster risk reduction, and management uh, measures. So I guess uh, with this, this concern can also be addressed now by the law since LGUs will now have more accountability, I guess, uh, since the national government will have to provide funds for the CBMS implementation, there will be more uh, accountability coming from the LGUs because they have to report as well uh, that they have uh, implemented as planned. No? Okay, when it comes to the uses of, uh, there's one thing that I would like to uh, mention also regarding the use of, uh, regarding the processing of uh, data. No? Uh, I think I agree with, with uh, Ms. Adaro when she mentioned that perhaps some LGUs who, uh, which failed to process their data, maybe that do not have the capacity, or maybe they they did not follow up from the CBMS network when it comes to their uh, the when it comes to the data that they have collected, and that is something that we have to address. I guess an important concern that have to be addressed, and probably I'm I'm, not, I'm also not quite sure if this sixteen percent and seventeen percent that were reported here are the LGUs which have not completely uh, finished their, their CBMS implementation. So I think that's one question that we may need to know. Uh, it may be those LGUs that have not uh, finished yet one round. Uh, although I'm not sure if this is covered in the questionnaire that uh, the researchers uh, prepared for this uh, particular study. 
when it comes to the uses of CBMS data, um, aside from setting priority areas and sectors, um, um, most of the LGUs uh, identified uh, mentioned that they use the CBMS data for ecological profiling, and this is a good news for us. No, but in but it is important to note, however, that uh, I've seen in the table, in the in the figure that they have presented in the paper, as well as in the in this presentation earlier, that only 0.1% specifically or explicitly indicated that they use CBMS to target beneficiaries. And uh, since I think this is one uh, important result that we should also focus on. Um, we all know, uh, I guess all of you know, that CBMS is a census of all, of all households. Uh, so it means that it can provide not only aggregate estimates, but also it can generate um, household and individual data that can serve as basis for targeting uh, beneficiaries of any specific government program geared towards poverty alleviation and economic development. And this is actually one of the strengths of CBMS. So, I strongly agree that this is another area that can be improved. Uh, for instance, there might be a need to provide more intensive trainings for our local government units when it comes to this uh, particular area. And let me uh, cite as one example that is very relevant at this time. Um, actually, during this COVID pandemic, when the government announced that they will be providing uh, assistance or providing uh, um, some funds to selected beneficiaries through its social amelioration program, I was actually hoping that uh, most of the LGUs with CBMS, with updated CBMS data, will use uh, their CBMS data for targeting the beneficiaries. Um, this is because the CBMS itself can be used to generate a list and even locate uh, the income poor or the food poor households. At the same time, CBMS can provide information on other vulnerable groups, such as uh, the persons with disabilities, senior citizens, um, solo parents, indigenous peoples, and even informal economy workers, as well as underprivileged or homeless individuals. Uh, that includes those who are living in makeshift housing or those who are living uh, as informal settlers. So those information can be uh, generated using the CBMS data. So I, I was actually uh, happy to, to learn that uh, there were few uh, uh, CBMS implementing LGUs that actually used their CBMS data for COVID-19 related social amelioration program and relief operations. And these LGUs, just to share with you some of them, now these LGUs include the municipality of Magallanes in Cavite, where they identified more than 5,000 households to be provided with relief packs, hygiene kits, and seedlings. Uh, with us today is the mayor of Magallanes, uh, Cavite, so perhaps later she can share a bit more about her experience regarding this. Um, there are other LGUs. Uh, let me just cite some of them. No? Uh, for instance, uh, uh, city, of, uh, gov city Government of Tagung in Dabao del Norte, Pakurong City, uh, Imus Cavite, and Noveleta in Cavite as well. Municipality of Orani Bataan, Apalit Pampanga, Nauhan Oriental Mindoro, uh, Gloria Oriental Mindoro, uh, Balderama in Antique, even the province of Dinagat Island in, uh, used their CBMS data for this COVID related program. The province of Sambuanga del Sur, General Santo City, Iligan City, Pangantukan in Bukidnon, Nagilian in La Union, Goa in Camarines Norte, Banga in South Cotabato, Tabaco City in Albay. So perhaps there are even more. I just uh, uh, prepared the short list, but there, perhaps there are even more LGUs which have used their CBMS data at this time of crisis. And uh, that this is something is, that is also a good news for me because at least they have utilized uh, the evidence in coming up with a set of beneficiaries for their uh, COVID related programs and projects. And perhaps some of our participants here in uh, WebEx and some of our participants in Facebook who are from different LGUs, they can also tell us if they have also used their CBMS data for uh, any COVID-related projects or programs in their own localities. So actually, I think with this, uh, let, let me just, uh, no, I don't know if I still have some time. Um, I think with this pandemic, um, it has helped us uh, further realize the essential role of local government units in dealing with the problems in their own localities. 
and having reliable and updated data that could serve as basis for implementing the needed intervention is very crucial uh, in these times. No? And here we also realize that LGUs have different capacities. LGUs, there are LGUs with more capacity while others need some further assistance to be able to uti fully utilize their CBMS data. And I'm hoping that when another round of this study is uh, conducted by the researchers, more LGUs will report that they use their CBMS data also for targeting their beneficiaries. Um, aside from these uses of CBMS data, I think there are also some areas uh, uh, where which have not explored yet. And uh, we have, for example, in, in my uh, interaction with some local government units, um, they have mentioned uh, the need for them to be trained on using CBMS data in preparing their uh, project proposals, for example, which they can submit internally or even for funding of external donors. So those are things that uh, LGUs uh, need to be trained on. And I guess uh, as long as the LGUs are capacitated, they can prepare their own proposals and they can be more effective in trying to use their CBMS uh, and fully utilize it. You know? um, and I also think that uh, while CBMS, CBMS covers many in choose areas that are not, there are areas that are not fully explored at the moment. Um, let me share a few areas, like for example, uh, CBMS is not only about those core poverty indicators. There are many aspects of uh, that are being covered in CBMS, uh, like for example, uh, topics concerning migration, including internal and international migration, agriculture, uh, climate change, of course, disaster preparedness and waste management, uh, among others. So perhaps um, the, in the future, LGUs and researchers can explore further these areas. And um, I'm not sure if I still have time. I think I will end there. I, ha I have actually prepared a few questions for the uh, researchers, but some of them were answered already during the presentation. Uh, maybe during the open forum, if I have the opportunity, I can also share a bit uh, uh, my, my clarifications for some aspects of their research. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Subrevinas, for your uh, uh, insightful uh, remarks. Now, let us hear the comments of our uh, discussions from the local government. Um, and uh, may I call on uh, Congresswoman Dalia Loyola of the 1st District of Cavite. Uh, we can call her Dr. Dalia or Dr. Loyola, as she is also a doctor of medicine. She is a graduate of the zoology from the University of the Philippines and Doctor of Medicine from the University of Perpetual Health, Health System, uh, Binyan. Dr. Loyola began her professional career as a doctor, but she eventually decided to enter politics and serve the people in a different way. Uh, she became the first female mayor of the municipality of Carmona, Cavite from 2004 to 2007 and from 2010 to 2019. After her three-year term as municipal mayor, Dr. Loyola was elected as the first female representative of the 5th District of Cavite. Here now is Representative Dalia Loyola of the 1st District of Cavite for her comments. Ma'am? Good afternoon to each and everyone. First, I would like to thank the organizer of this discussion. Thank you very much for giving me the chance to share the experience of Carmona. Really, the CBMS is a very useful tool for economic profiling, project formulation and identification, and for basis for budgeting. Yung sinabi ko kanina ng um, comments and reactions ni Ma'am Aleli ay very, very useful. Pero sa uh, katulad namin pong uh, bayan ng Carmona na naging uh, uh, initial na nag-start ng CBMS way back 2008, so marami kaming uh, data utilization na uh, nagamit namin sa pamamagitan ng CBMS na nagamit talaga namin for aming uh, pag-i-implement ng different programs. So yung sigurong yung mga geotagging na sinasabi nila ngayon na hindi pa nagagamit ng iba, nagagamit na namin ngayon kasi round 5 na po kami and we are very very fortunate na uh, tablet-based na ang ginagamit ng aming mga enumerators. So ito talaga is a very, very useful tool. Kailangan, kailangan, kailangan natin ito para ma-identify natin ang ating magagagawing plans and programs para sa ating comprehensive development plan, para ma-close natin yung ating gaps from our uh, definition ng ating vision para makita natin yung current reality. Diba? 
Pero uh, gusto kong mag-share ng aking honest thoughts para doon sa mga uh, local government unit na talagang uh, trying their best na bakit hindi nila ma-implement na, na maayos itong ating uh, CBNS. Despite the importance of an evidence-based approach to this development for both fiscal and political impediments for municipalities to adopt the community-based monitoring system, though the CBMS is a more uh, appropriate alternative to other data systems being given by the DLLG, it still requires a stable and considerable amount of resources to be implemented, given po yan. So yung nagiging setback siguro ng ibang ating uh, local government ay wala silang pagkukunan ng pondo. Kaya nga natutuwa ako na isang fourth class municipality gaya ng aking co-mayor before na si Mayor Jasmine was able to successfully implement CBMS sa kanilang uh, bayan. So yung data ang pinresent yung kanina of the 1,373 municipalities, actually it's 1,488 given na yung areas in Mindanao is not included. So nakakalungkot, it's only about 57% or considering yung 1,488, 51% lang nito ang nag adapt ng CBMS. It kasi ang uh, kalimitan kasing uh, pinagkukunan ng pondo, yung funding nito ay nanggagaling doon sa internal revenue allotment. And to think, ay um, hindi naman katulad ng uh, ibang bayan na maraming sources of income dahil meron silang mga businesses. So, hantayin ang ibang munisipyo kasi focus ang kanilang ira sa kanilang uh, pagbibigay ng uh, uh, programs para sa kanilang social services. So, dito sana dapat pumasok yun sa implementing rules and uh, regulations para mahanapan kung saan pwedeng kumuha. So, nakita ko nga kanina, yung pinresent yung kanina, yung sa legitimacy na kung pwedeng kunin doon sa 5% ng local disaster risk Reduction and Management Plan. Siguro we have to look into this. Na ako tingin ko, be coming from locals for the past nine years, doon sa 5% LDRRM, kailangan nito kasi kami, nagamit namin yung data namin from CBMS doon sa climate change. We were able to identify yung mga nasa risk, uh, um, vulnerable sectors na nasa danger zone. So, importanteng imparte natin ito sa ating disaster risk. So, may reason. Siguro makakapain tayo ng legitimate reason na pwedeng gamitin yung 5% na i-realign ng mga mayors para mapondo sa ating CBMS. Tapos doon sa 20% local development fund, from the data gathered dito sa CBMS, pag nakita natin yung mga tao natin sa danger zone, it is but a mass that you have to provide them, di ba? Na kailangan natin dito ng resettlement area para may transfer natin dito. From uh, paggawa natin ng resettlement area, kailangan natin gumawa ng road networks dito. So siguro, sana nga kung itong implementing rules and guidelines ng RA11315, ay eh, gusto kong itanong kung ito ay in place na. Sana ito'y pag-usapan mabuti so that may encourage natin ang ating mga local chief executive na talagang i-adapt itong CBMS. Although it's already mandatory as a law, pero kung wala namang uh, budget na pagkukunan, Kasi ang mabigat dito, gaya ng experience namin dito sa Carmona, meron kami talagang surveyor na ginagamit. We started way back in 2008. Nang paper-based pa lang kami, we have 33 enumerators. Right now, we have 48 enumerators, 10 field editors, and 8 technical staff. Before we started way back 5 years ago, paper-based lang kami. Ngayon kami ay uh, tablet-based na. Namuhunan din ang local government ng uh, malaking halaga para maibili ng tablet ang lahat ng aming field workers. Pero at the end of the day, makikita mo talaga kung ano ang usefulness ng CBMS. Itong pangyayari nitong uh, implementation ng uh, social amelioration ay nakita namin na uh, hindi tayo po pwedeng lumabas dahil... Uh, because of the global, uh, global pa pandemic... Uh, during the imposition of the enhanced community quarantine, CBMS has been an effective tool to keep everybody safe, particularly our, our MSWD and the barangay personnel who are responsible for household data gathering. So yung COVID cases, even though it's low during that time, thanks to the, the availability of the CBMS process data, data gathering of these people is no longer needed and the risk of contacting and spreading this highly infectious disease had been minimized. So the CBMS has significantly helped in reducing the chances of 
possible duplication of household beneficiaries, which is uh, vital to maintain the reliability of the LGU in providing efficient public services among the poorest among the poorest during this time of the pandemic. So, ang ginawa po namin during the time of the social amelioration, nagpa-meeting kami, hindi na namin kinakailangan pang um, napakadali ang pag identify ng vulnerable sector. So, nag-meeting, uh, we called the heads of the different vulnerable sectors kasi it is already our time to do the uh, the, ano, the updating. Mag-update kami. We, we do the updating every three years. It is very important that you do the updating every three years. So, scheduled namin February ay nag-start naman ng uh, pandemic. So, napatigil po kami. So, what we did is we called the uh, heads of the different vulnerable sectors dahil sila ay may updated records ng mga EWDs, ng ating mga tricycle drivers, ng ating OFWs, ng ating mga solo parents, ng ating mga senior citizens para hindi lang namin yung additional records. Pero from that, yung previous records nila doon na namin isinalpok sa database namin sa amin pong CBMS. So from there, yung timely distribution namin ng uh, CBMS ay uh, highly attributed doon sa efficiency ng aming CBMS data collection. So in-identify ng aming enumerators ang lahat ng vulnerable sectors Tapos, uh, based on the uh, Carmona was only given around uh, 13,000. Oh, so how many percent of that of the, the we have 24,000 household based on CBMS. So ang beneficiaries lang po na napabigay sa amin ay uh, 13,000 or 55 percent. So paano namin hahatiin yon sa buong barangay? Na kailangan ba namin lumabas? Eh, hindi naman pwede, pwede lumabas because of the pandemic. So dito pumasok yung importance ng CBMS at ang re reliability ng data nito. From that data, so the national government allotted 13,000. We are faced by, uh, paano namin i-identify yung targeted beneficiary deserving yung i-identify namin yung most vulnerable. So, from that data, all our enumerators submitted the list of the vulnerable members based on their uh, census. Tiningnan namin yung sa amin CBMS. From that CBMS, nakita namin, gumawa kami ng sarili namin template. Let, let's say, for example, na-identify namin ang isang member of the family. Makikita mong same address doon. Then ma-identify mo na doon kung sino yung senior citizen, PWD, solo parent. May member sila na mayroon ding vulnerable sectors na naandod doon din sa pamilyang ito. So from that 13,000, you can see na nung ibalik po sa amin ng national agency yung amin pong ginawa, would you imagine 1.36% lang mang po doon ang may duplication dahil alam nyo naman ang ating mga kababayan, hindi naman sila magsasabi na sila ay nakatanggap na ng dole. Pero we were commended by the DSWD Regional Office dahil napakaayos po ng aming mga records. And then from there, yung succeeding pa po na hinili sa amin na additional na waitlisted, doon din po namin pinuha sa amin pong listing ng CBMS. So you can see how useful this data gathering is. So itong beneficiaries namin ng SAP, kung makikita po ninyo, na yan, identify lahat yan. This is this all came from our CBMS data, which is our data bank way back 2017. So yung updating po namin, which is supposed to happen this uh, February, tina, inabot na kami ng pandemia, ay napilitan din lumabas, uh, 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 hindi naman ganun ka-frequent para mapuntahan po namin yung hindi namin na-identify. Well, we, we are supposed to do the updating, yung hindi napasama sa survey. So, yan po yan. Kaya lang, ang napalabas lang talaga namin na hindi lang namin na gamit ang CBMS yung pregnant and lactating mothers. Pero the rest, I'm telling you, CBMS is a very useful tool. And at the end of the day, let us work hand in hand for the implementing rules and uh, regulations ito para ma-encourage natin ang more local governments to embrace this program and to find ways where we could find a budget so that they would ha not have a hard time um, uh, finding uh, finances to to give uh, salaries to their enumerators. And I have been telling this to plenty of uh, being the 
mayor of uh, being the president of the mayor league, mayor's league last three years, I was recommending this to fellow mayors eh, na pinasabi ko sa kanila napakagandang programang ito. Imagine mo sa, 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 sa date ang makukuha mo dito, nandito ng lahat. Pag kailangan mo mag-implement ng program, may dumating sa amin dito, uh, let's say, limbawa, national government, mayor, meron kaming ibababang program dito. Let's say, magbibigay kami ng funding for the uh, mga ladies mo na mga walang trabaho, mga nanays mo na walang trabaho. Pipindutin mo lamang yan sa CBMS data. Hahati-hatiin mo na lang yan kung paano mo hahatiin yan sa buong barangay. And that's it. Kaya mo nang implement ang programang ito. So thank you very much kay Ma'am Celia. At sana pa ay uh, mapalawig pa ito at kami natutuwa dahil sabi ko nga sa inyo, geotagging kasama na sa amin, road networks kasama na sa amin yan. By this, nakatulong na rin po kami doon sa aming mandamus ng Supreme, Bay, ng Supreme Court, doon po sa merong uh, itong ating mga sa ano septic at walang septic tank. And at the end of the day, pag nag update kami, we usually meet with our department head. Baka meron silang gustong ipa-override na questionnaires na importante para sa kanilang departamento para hindi nasasayang ang aming oras na ini-spend namin sa aming mga service. Sa inyong lahat na behind this program, congratulations. Looking forward sa another time na kayo makapag-share ng ano pa ang benefits nitong ating pong CBMS. Sa inyo pong lahat, magandang hapon po muli at mabuhay po tayong lahat. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Congresswoman uh, Dalia Loyola. We'll hear more from you during the open forum. Uh, marami pong salamat sa experience na shinier nyo. Uh, sa experience ng, uh, ng inyong local government ng, uh, ng Carmona sa pag-implement po ng CBMS. Our second discussion is Mayor Jasmine Angeli Maligaya Bautista of Magallanes, Cavite. Uh, Mayor Maligaya is a graduate of master, Master's in Management, a major in Development Management and Local Governance at the, at the University of uh, the Philippines, Los Mayos. Her advocacies include environment, peace and order, and, and um, Discipline for which Magallanes has been a recipient of the seal of good local governance for three consecutive years from 2017 to 2019. She is now serving her second term as local chief executive of Magallanes Cavite. Uh, Mayor Maligaya, your turn. Yes, thank you very much, Ms. Sheila. Um, my pleasant good afternoon to all, uh, especially my co-speaker, uh, Congressman Dalia Loyola, and all other local chief executives and uh, planning officers that are here today. Uh, first, I would like to uh, cite my comments and insights on the study's findings and recommendation. Um, first, um, in the absence of, um, I know this is a mandated database tool, no? the local development indicator set and the rationalized learning indicator set. But um, according to the study, uh, there is a regularity in uh, profiling of this um, database tool. So I think it is not being an effective tool um, in the presence of CBMS uh, in economic profiling, budget preparation, and priority setting of the local government units. Um, second, in spite of CBMS as a law, I think there is still a need uh, uh, for the LGUs to be reminded of the importance and beauty of community-based monitoring system. As such, uh, first of course, a source of information for disaster risk reduction, planning, and disaster response. As a tool in identifying the vulnerable groups and casualties of natural disasters, and eventually um, immediate identification of their needs and concerns. Um, as a groundwork for evidence-based plans and programs on socioeconomic situations, hazards, societal vulnerability, and poverty diagnosis, and all other uh, development plans. Um, it is also uh, used data for programs and services intervention of effective and efficient utilization of local government units um, 
um, in terms of their budget in response to the grassroots needs of the community and of their people. Um, in order for this data to be accurate and re reliable, I think there should be a regular data collection and analysis. And uh, thirdly, uh, I also agree uh, with um, um, Dr. Dr. An Anelli um, said a while ago that uh, we should have uh, we could we could have the exploration the possibility of mando mandatory funding for establishment of CBMS in different local government units and regular data collection and analysis. It is also better if we could provide assistance, um, the national government could, could provide assistance to fourth and sixth class municipalities. Um, in the study, uh, it is um, realized that um, the first uh, first is the LDRRF funding. Doon po natin kinukuha yung ating uh, CBMS implementation. Well, I guess uh, katulad po ng mga ibang mandatory fundings like the GAD and uh, other mandatory funds, uh, we could explore the possibility to have a mandatory funding for CBMS. Kasi po, um, during, uh, especially during this time of pandemic, and sa amin po nung nagkaroon po ng taal eruption, talaga pong nagamit namin yung aming LDRRM fund. So, um, mas mabuti po kung we allocate a mandatory funding for uh, CBMS alone. So, yun lang po ang aking insights and comments with, uh, um, with the findings and recommendation. And now let me share to you um, some of the best practices and um, impacts of uh, CBMS as a local planning tool in our municipality. So next slide, please. So let me um, have a brief background on CBMS on our LGU. We had... Um, our CBMS year 2011, so with the previous administration, um, it took us, uh, in module one, it took us two months for data collection. It was paper-based back then. And then for module two, we had six months of data encoding. And for the module three, we had 11 months of data processing, mapping, and building of CBMS data. And for our module four, we had 11 months barangay development planning and budgeting. Um, next slide, please. For CBMS round two, it was uh, year 2016, so ako na po ang dito. And I saw the need and the beauty of the CBMS. That's why uh, pinondohan po natin to at talaga naman pong sinuportahan po natin ang ating planning development officer po with regards to um, implementation and continuation of our CBMS. So, module one po, we had uh, four, ma four months data collection at uh, tablet-based na po ito, hindi na po kami paper-based. And uh, for the module two, three months data processing, mapping, and building, CBMS database. And module three, five months barangay development planning and budgeting. And for 2018, we have integrated CBMS into our comprehensive development plan. So, mapapansin nyo po, uh, for round one and round two, in comparison, ay mas mabilis na po namin nagagawa. Maybe because, uh, of course, yung year one po namin or yung round one po namin, syempre nag-establish po kami nitong community-based monitoring system na to. And we are very thankful to, to the municipality of Carmona, uh, to Congressman um, Daria Loyola and way back at the mayor before, and of course, um, Congressman Roy Loyola, for sharing their good practices and for uh, for uh, really uh, be, being our mentors in uh, CBMS implementation. And now uh, for the CBMS round three, year 2019, uh, we had for five months, we had data collection and also, of course, tablet-based. 
And uh, supposed to be po, supposedly we are going to uh, start with our data processing, mapping, and building CBMS database. But of course, uh, meron pong pandemic ngayon, so medyo na delay lamang po. Ito po ang aming uh, CBMS round 3, data processing, mapping, and building CBMS database. So next slide, please. Next slide. Thank you. So, um, utilization of RCBMS data. We uh, we use RCBMS data for uh, for a lot of things. So, one is the different plans in the municipality. Uh, we had we have the comprehensive development plan. We have the comprehensive land use plan, peace and order and public safety plan, local shelter plan local public transport route plan, uh, comprehensive emergency plan for children, and resilient tourism development plan using RCBMS data. Next slide, please. We also use this as uh, to our disaster risk reduction and management plans, including our contingency plan for the big one, our contingency plan for landslide, our local climate action uh, plan, our local disaster risk reduction and management plan, our solid waste management plan, and our climate disaster risk assessment plan using, of course, our CBMS data. Next slide, please. Um, the DRRM plans use number and data of households to be affected by natural disaster or calamity. So we use the georeference -ref point system that is very helpful to locate households that are located in the vulnerable areas. So that, uh, as you can see, uh, we have generated the population exposure map, uh, the households with PWD, the makeshift houses susceptible to earthquake and, and all alike. Next slide, please. CBMS data are also proven to be useful in post-calamity intervention. So, ito na po yung sinasabi ko kanina because uh, during the time when the Taal volcano erupted, napaka, uh, napaka useful po ng aming CBMS data to, to locate households that accepts evacuees from the Taal eruption. Kasi po naging evacuee hub po ang Magallanes since uh, malapit po ito sa Taal. Uh, we also easily identified households that are affected by the Taal eruption within our municipality. And we also verified the names and the identity of those who are suspicious individual in jurisdiction for safety and security purposes. Kasi po, um, nag nagagamit po yung mga ganitong calamity, yung taal erup uh, volcano eruption, ay um, nagagamit din po na, kumbaga, na-abuse din. Yung mga, meron po tayong mga ilan na pumupunta po dito. So, uh, we easily identified their names and verified their identity using RCBMS data. Next slide, please. Of course, uh, during the pandemic, uh, the coronavirus, the COVID-19, no, napaka helpful po nitong ating uh, CBMS data, and I I see the beauty of it. So we have during the distribution of our food packs, our hygiene kit, and medicines. Um, yung mga ayuda po na tinatawag natin sa ating local government. Uh, we have generated household lists given relief assistance during the enhanced community quarantine. We also identified households who are qualified in the social amelioration program. Hindi na po kami nahirapan, uh, hindi na po bumaba ang ating uh, DSWD to get all the uh, the households who are qualified for this SAP. At isa po ito sa pinagmamalaki ko din dahil po na-congratulate din po kami ng national, gover eh, ng national and regional government for a job well done, ano po, for identifying the social amelioration program. And uh, siguro po, mas naging mabilis ang pagbibigay po namin ng SAP. Uh, identified all households who are qualified in sa klolo, sa kakulangan, so, meron po kasi kami naging programa na 
uh, we are giving financial assistance for those non-beneficiary of the uh, social amelioration program. So, na-identify po namin agad at mabilis kung sino po ang mga hindi nabigyan ng SAP. Uh, we also identified household who receive assistance from other agencies. So, hindi po nagkaroon ng duplication ang pagbibigay po namin ng mga financial assistance. And we also identified all the households um, belonging to, to the vulnerable groups such as the pregnant women and like lactating women kasi po nagkaroon po ako dito ng programa na magbibigay din po ng financial assistance sa lahat po ng mga nanay na mayroon pong 0 to 3 years old na uh, mga anak and sa lahat po din ng mga buntis. So uh, with the information, with the data that we have, it was easily um, identified. Ano ho? So, meron din po kaming mga uh, households with senior citizens, PWD, and solo parents. Households with members who are most affected by the enhanced community quarantine, like um, mga jeepney drivers natin, tricycle drivers natin, and the like. Next slide, please. So, CPMS data are also proven to be useful in peace and order situation, program interventions, and economic development. Uh, so, the PNP coordination to verify the names and identity of those who are suspicious. And uh, we have identified senior citizens uh, who needs financial assistance. We also identified children who are out of school youth, children who are malnourished, uh, we have identified families with income below poverty threshold and qualified to livelihood programs. We also identified unemployed individuals to participate in the job fair. Uh, we generated lists of households without sanitary toilet facilities and safe water supply. And uh, for the last citizen satisfaction index system, uh, last December 11, 2018, that conducted by the Cavite State University in coordination with the DILG, uh, we got, the municipality of Magallanes got 94% rating, which means that all the programs and services of the LGU in seven different areas, which is health, support to education, social welfare, governance and response, public works and infrastructure, environmental management, and economic and investment promotion exceeded the expectation of all Magalenos. Moreover, 97.33% that uh, of all Magalenos said that they are proud to be a resident of Magallanes. Maybe because um, the CBMS data played a vital role no, of, um, of uh, having a baseline for the, uh, for the establishment of our uh, interventions, programs, uh, services, interventions for our people. Next slide, please. So these are the different LGU programs implemented and identified through the CBMS data. We had uh, text blast. Ito po yung um, sa uh, um, pag-establish ng uh, system sa lahat po ng cellphone sa uh, community ng Magallanes. So parang LGU ID na po ito. Uh, uh, nakita ko po kasi there's a need for this one, especially um, in time of pandemic and disasters. Uh, Basura Palit Bigas Program, our Toilet Bowl Distribution, our Financial Assistance, Mass Wedding, Scholarship and Educational Assistance. Um, next, next slide, please. The Saklolo sa Kakulangan Handog ng Mayngiti sa Bawat Magaleno Financial Assistance Program. So ito po talaga ang very useful, no? nakita ko talaga na um, there's an ease for us local chief executives and for the local government units na uh, identified mo agad kung sino po ang may kailangan. Like halimbawa po yung mga hindi po nabigyan ng SAP namin, ng Social Amelioration Program, mas mabilis po at hindi nagkakaroon ng duplication. Uh, sa pagbibigay po ng financial assistance. Next slide, please. 
So there are other programs supported by the national government, NGO, private sector, or international organizations that we use our CBMS data. Uh, the contract tracing app, so ito din po ay, uh, syempre, ay, uh, Kumbaga, best practice din po ito ng municipality of Carmona and we are very thankful for sharing it with us. The contact tracing app, the QR code, so mas mabilis po ang pagbibigay namin ng QR code sa mga households po namin. No? Electrification, uh, nalalaman po namin kung sino po sa munisipyo namin or mga sitios ng mga barangay po namin kung sino pong wala pang kuryente. Uh, the alternative learning system, Four piece program, job fair, feeding program, sunung dunong, social pension, uh, the anti drug abuse campaign, drug free workplace, and uh, for the local economic development plan that was um, initiated by the Galing Pook. Um, so, yung pung mga all the like one uh, other programs uh, that we use um, using the uh, that we utilize the CBMS data. Next slide, please. So I'm very proud to uh, tell you, no, na so ito na po other programs. Next slide, please. Thank you. I'm very proud to say na meron po kami mga uh, staff, municipal staff na nag-start lang po sa uh, enumer being an enumerators pero ngayon po because we saw their potentials and uh, their qualities and credibilities no and we uh, we um, naging ano na rin po namin sila naging uh, permanent employee na rin po sila dito sa munisipyo and I'm very proud of them because um, they are being um, being invited by different municipalities uh, to present our CBMS implementation or to present our best practice so uh, some of which are the DRM, DRRM Association of Cavite the Municipality of Silang Cavite, the City of Trece Martires Cavite, and the Municipality of Ternate Cavite. Medyo uh, honored lang din po ako and very proud because uh, for a fourth class municipality to be um, to be asked to present uh, the CBMS implementation and their best practices to other uh, cities, big big cities and other municipalities. So nakakatuwa po, nakakataba ng puso. Next slide please. Um, this one is uh, the LGU of Caraga, Davao uh, Oriental, and um, visited the municipality of Magallanes, Cavite, no, para po magkaroon din sila ng uh, benchmarking about our CBMS implementation, uh, and this was March 19, 2019. Next, please. Next slide, please. So, um, in in a nutshell, I want I would like to share the beauty of uh, community-based monitoring system, and I guess um, it should be implemented and it should be adapted by uh, all local government units. At hindi po ako hindi at sana po maging inspiration po ang munisipyo ng Magallanes, because uh, like us, a fourth-class municipality. Uh, nagawa po namin. So, hindi po, wala pong rason para hindi nyo rin po magawa, no? So, CBMS is a source of information for disaster risk reduction planning and disaster response. And it's a tool in identifying vulnerable groups and casualties of natural disasters. It is also a groundwork for evidence-based plans and programs on socioeconomic situations, hazards, society vulnerability, and poverty diagnosis. Next slide, please. And the CBMS seeks to address the existing data gaps at the local level, determining the causes of poverty, formulating appropriate policies and programs, identify, identification of eligible beneficiaries, and assessing impact of policies and programs. Indeed, CBMS has several features that enhance the capacity of the local governments in detecting and reducing poverty. Next slide, please. So with that, um, especially uh, today in this time of pandemic, no, napaka importante po ng ating data na meron po tayong uh, database tool like CBMS uh, upang uh, makatugon po tayo and to maximize our budget because like us, a fourth class municipality, 
kailangan po nating maging strategical sa paggamit ng ating pondo because we only have much. So, um, CBMS is very useful in maximizing our budget. And I would like to end my uh, presentation uh, with a quote from Benjamin Franklin, by failing to prepare, you are preparing to fail. So, thank you very much and God bless us all. Thank you very much, uh, Mayor Maligaya, and of course, uh, to uh, Congresswoman uh, Loyola for your inspiring remarks on the usefulness of the CBMS. Uh, before we start our uh, Q&A, may I ask Dr. Sikat for her brief response to the comments of our discussions. Justine? Thank you, Mayor Bautista. Thank you, Congresswoman Mayor Dr. Loyola. And thank you also, Professor Aleli Sabradinas, for all of your comments. Um, that's that's a lot to take in, but first and foremost, I would like to congratulate the government of Carmona and also of Magallanes on your commendable performance. It's very inspiring to hear that uh, you were able to use uh, the CBMS in your distribution of the SAP under COVID um, with very little, I think, doctor. Congresswoman Loyola said only 1.36% duplication and Magallanes, there was no duplication at all. So very commendable. Also on your forward thinking leadership, um, using the QR code, <laughs> that's very interesting. That's a very young uh, thing to, to, to be able to uh, contact trace. So, so that as well. And also on your being a fourth class municipality, but repeated SGLG um, winner because um, two weeks ago I also presented the results of my study on the perceptions of municipalities on the SGLG and the PCF and and it's inspiring to hear that you can even budget even if you're a fourth class municipality to be able to strategically uh, allocate your budget which is also related to one of Aleli's comments earlier she said we have to be able to use resources efficiently and we can probably perhaps in fact improve our service delivery as can be seen in your example using the CBMS, whether in the time of COVID or, or just in the regular time with your four-piece program. Um, so there, so in addition to that, um, it's also interesting to hear the stories on the ground, um, the shift from the paper to the tablet uh, form of the CBMS, because this would also address Aladi's comment. Uh, she was saying that perhaps the, the evidence that we got that some of the LGUs say that there's still need for geotagging and, and such, is perhaps also because they are uh, still using the older version or have not updated to the more newer version, which actually reinforces our um, recommendations that there needs to be reorientation again with local governments, especially now that the CBMS now is a law and it is mandated, it is mandatory uh, for all um, local government units and it will be aligned with the targeting. Now, with regard also to the comment on the funding, and I also noticed that um, Congressman Loyola also was speaking for the, the poor municipalities, of course, with your exemption, Mayor Bautista, that sometimes they really cannot afford to, to, to conduct the CBMS because it's costly. However, I think perhaps we can ask the CBMS Council representatives here uh, today um, what the implication of the Section 5 of the CBMS Act is, because Section 5 indicates that the financing and technical assistance will be shouldered by national government agencies. At the same time, in Section 11, uh, it addresses that the priorities in the first three years will be for the fourth to sixth class municipalities, income class municipalities. So perhaps we can get more detail on those uh, implementing, I don't know, with the DILG or the PSA regarding that. And it's also nice to know that um, about the LGU ID that you mentioned earlier, Mayor Bautista. Um, it's very interesting because the APPC conference of the PIDS, although I'm jumping myself ahead of it, really talks about institutions because of the challenge in the distribution of the SAP. Uh, if there had been a national ID system in place or some sort of alignment problems in checking duplications and to hear your success stories, I think it's very important moving forward and that conference of ours will be attended. So I think that addresses the, the most of the comments. I already integrated them and uh, cited the, the specific uh, person who mentioned it. So thank you so much. Thank you very much, Justine. At this point, may I, may I also ask the DILG through uh, Ms. Charity Agbayani, Local Government Operations Officer 5 of the ILG's Bureau of Local uh, 
Government Development or BLGD to respond to the comments of our she's uh, okay but um okay we can ask uh Miss uh, Charity's uh, uh, the DILG's uh, uh, remarks or comments later okay and um okay so there okay now before we go to the open forum let us have a poll and one of the issues uh, reported by um, our speakers is the irregular conduct of the CBMS data collection by some LGUs. Uh, for instance, 15% uh, of LGUs are conducting the data collection every five years, although we've seen that around 58% are already doing the data collection every five years, which is what is prescribed um, by the C CBMS law. So how do you think can we address this gap? Um, one of the possibilities could be if we provide an incentive to the LGUs through the SGLG or the seal of, seal of good local go uh, government. Okay, and to encourage uh, more uh, regular conduct of the CBMS. So tell us if you agree or disagree to the following statement. To encourage more uh, regular conduct of the CBMS data collection, the government should add CBMS to the seal of good local governance criteria. Do you agree or disagree? Tell us what you think. Okay, so the, um, the statement is now on your screen. Uh, let us know what you think. Okay, so and we will reveal the results of this poll before the end of the webinar. Okay, so we are now ready to entertain your questions. And for our uh, Q&A, aside from Dr. Sikat, Ms. Adaro, uh, Dr. Sabrevinas, Congressman Loyola, and Mayor Maligaya, we will be joined by Ms. Uh, Mildred Purificacion, who is the uh, Municipal Planning and Development Coordinator of the City of Carmona, and Ms. Charity Agbayani, Local Government Operations Officer 5 of the ILG's Bureau of Local Government Development. I have also requested Dr. Reyes to join our panel of speakers. So as you can see, we have a, um, you know, a very, um, uh, an all female panel for, for this webinar. So uh, may I request all of you to please um, turn on your videos so uh, our audience can see you. Okay, so we have already received a number of questions from our WebEx uh, participants. And uh, let us start uh, by entertaining questions related to the um, findings of the study. And uh, if I may throw this question to Justine. Justine, um, this one is from Carlo Jan Arceo. Um, Okay, of China Agricultural University, as we've seen in your presentation, uh, there is a decline of the utilization of CBMS among the surveyed municipalities in 2019. And uh, is there a specific reason that you saw for this decline of uh, the CBMS utilization during the year? Yes, thank you for that, um, Mr. Arceo. I think uh, the slide 14, we could um, um, go back to it. Well. I'll have to share it. But in any case, the slide 14 shows us the number of LGUs that started using CBMS. So it's not necessarily a decline. If you if you sum it all up, it shows the total number of uh, LGUs that started using it. So perhaps because there were a lot of LGUs that were already um, using it, that's why fewer and fewer um, were added in, in the later years. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Justine. Okay, let's now go to the... Uh to the other questions from our um, WebEx uh, participants. If I may uh, throw this question to our LGU uh, discussants, and because they are particularly interested in um, the, uh, the cost of um, implementing the CBMS. So this one is from uh, Maria Estrella Luz Peñaloza. May we know po if there if um yung average cost spent for C CBMS data collection and um this is also related to the question of J Paras with a study conducted for the CBMS tool especially for LGUs which already implemented this what is the recommended budget allotment in piloting the project uh, Mayor Maligaya 
uh, you may go first, and then we, we can hear uh, after you. We can hear from Congressman Loyola. Uh, hello. Um, for I think it would really depends on the population of the LGU. No, for us, mm -hmm. uh, for class municipality, and for for a population of uh, twenty two thousand, it's about one mil one million to one point five million. Okay, one million to one point five million. Okay, uh, ma'am, Congressman Loyola, please, if you could kindly turn on your mic, Paul. Hello. Hello, ma yes, ma'am, we can hear you, Paul. So, ayan ko si Mildred ang sumagot niyan kasi one year okay. na kung halo sa Congress, dalimutan ko na yan. Nine years yan sa amin, nag-start ako eh. Pero ang nakita ko dyan yung, uh, si Mildred sasagot mamaya, yung uh, budget namin for tablet, di ba right Mildred? And right now, talagang meron kaming uh, uh, regular na binabayaran na enumerators that have mm -hmm. been with us through the years na talagang useful. These mm -hmm. enumerators, kung saan ka barangay, doon ka talaga mm -hmm. nakatigil, doon ka magsesensus. Ito yung mga house mm -hmm. surveyors namin. If I may uh, share dito magandang experience, imagine mo during the time of the pandemic, contact trace. Oh. Use for less ng CBMS, sa gabi, tatawagan kami ng DOH. Ma'am, ito yung mm. positive. Ang address, mm. very, very, walang number, walang ganyan. Sarado okay. ang opisina, ang sarado ang lahat. Sabihin mo lang sa akin kung ano yung, yung barangay. Tatawagan ko yung enumerators na in charge doon sa area niyan kasi kami by city o by street. Tatawagan ni Dr. Dalian. Pagtawag ko, walang two minutes, kukunin yung logbook or di kayo yung tablet. Sasagot sa'yo pa maya, ma'am, give me two minutes. Babalik sa yan. Ma'am, diyan nakatigil yung positive na yan. Okay. Yun, pwede na namin i-lock down yung lugar na yun. So yan ang yes. usefulness ng data. Mildred, sagutin mo. <laughs> Hi, Mildred. Could you please enlighten us on uh, this question? Uh, magkano ba yung, ano, uh, yung cost, yung... Um, nung uh, pag-implement yun ng CBMS. Good morning po. Ah, tama ba? Hello? Okay na? Naririnig yes, ako? Okay yes, ma'am. Okay po. Yes, ma'am. Uh, sa ngayon po, umaabot po ng 150 to 180 per household. Kasi po, uh, tablet-based na po kasi kami ngayon, unlike before na paper-based. Uh, at meron nga po kaming regular na binabayaran. Yan po yung aming uh, monthly na... Uh, may, may monthly na binabayaran po kami for our enumerators na naka naka reflect po sa aming uh, MOOE ng planning. Okay. So that is regular mm -hmm. para po mm -hmm. maano po natin yung ating reliability po ng ating uh, data. Pag okay. sila rin po yung uh, sila lahat yung nagsimula hanggang sa huli, the panel data pati po maganda po. Pagka po mm -hmm. uh, ang enumerators ay sila pa rin. And then uh, okay. yung yung, uh, yung iba po na charge po sa ano lahat-lahat na po yung 150 to 180 hindi na po yun kukulangin okay sa salamat salamat uh, ma'am Mildred and Congressman Loyola and of course si uh, Mayor uh, Maligaya okay let's go back to the data that you collected uh, that you you and your team collected just mean kasi we saw there that uh, in terms of uh, ecological profiling mas ginagamit yung CBM as ano more than what is prescribed by the DILG, which is the rapids. No, and um, so yung yung question ngayon is, and this question came from uh, uh, Miss uh, Pamela Manalo. Um, nakita ba niyo sa study niyo kung bakit the, the DILGs uh, prefer the CBMS over the rapids? And if this is the case, kung mas prefer ng LG use yung, yung, yung CBMS, um, follow up question from uh, Jovel Castillo. Would you still, can we still recommend the use of, uh, can we recommend, can we still recommend the use of the rapids? Uh, despite the fact na ano, na mas ginagamit yung, yung CBMS. And also from Julian Donio Castro, considering the usefulness of CBMS, should DILG update its guidelines on, um, in terms of the formulation of uh, ecological profiling of the LGUs, uh, for that last question, maybe we can hear from ano from uh, charity of the DILG, Justine. Yeah. 
Yes, okay, so thank you for those questions, those related questions. To answer the last one, actually that was part of our recommendation of the baseline study um, results we presented back in um, July, July 16. It was really mm -hmm. to represent, since the evidence shows that uh, LGUs, the municipalities we surveyed, are really more familiar using the CDMS. Um, okay. Despite the fact that it's being, uh, that it's the RAPIDS and the LDIS that is prescribed. So, um, the, the next steps would be for the DILG, that question. Uh, with regard okay. to why, we were not able to examine why, because um, as I mentioned earlier, the study was part of a larger study. It was a seven page instrument that we surveyed uh, local governments on their development planning processes. So it was a very detailed study. Our question, as I mentioned earlier, was simply just, what is the primary data set tool that was mm -hmm. there? And then okay. we had several questions after that. What, mm -hmm. Once we identify what the primary data set tool was, um, RAPID, LDIS, RCBMS, whatever, we have follow-up questions. Um, how often do you conduct it? Was there a budget allocated? Where did you come from? So it was really a general um, fill in the blanks, depending on which the priority of the municipality was in ecological growth finding. So thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Charity, um, can we get, get your thoughts on this? We know um, that uh, you're handling the CDMS, but would you have any thoughts why, you know, uh, the LGUs prefer to use CDMS more than the RAPIDS, which is what is being recommended by the DILG? Um, I think, Ma'am Siguro, I, in my opinion, um, I think the LGUs uh, prefer to use the CBMS over RAPIDS. It's because, Siguro, Ma'am, yung accessibility ng sa data. Kasi with the CBMS, po, we have pool of trainers. So mm -hmm. from, from provincial, regional, um, down to provincial level, national, regional, provincial level, we have trainers. So if they have questions and they need technical assistance, we could easily provide them. So RAPIDS, mm -hmm. na, so um they have also trainers pero siguro it's not that ganun kalaki compared sa sa CBMS okay. kasi we have 300 plus trainers but then ma'am siguro it's the same thing kasi yung sa rapids po it's um ko ano po yung nasa rapids kinuha rin naman po yung sa CBMS so there okay. are certain indicators from the rapids na nandoon din talaga po sa uh -oh. CBMS Yes. Okay, okay. Uh, wala bang effort na i-consolidate na lang yung dalawa para isa na lang tool ang, ang gagamitin? Um, with regards to that po, ma'am, siguro I think kasi with the new law, si PSA uh -oh. is the beginning, um, lead agency on the implementation of CBMS. So siguro right now, mm -hmm. they are um, working on the new modules for the CBMS. So we still don't know kung ano po yung, yung questionnaire gagamitin. So I think mm -mm. it's much better kung si PSA po yung makakasagot. But then they are asking us with the previous mm -mm. meeting na yung mga indicators ng RAPIDS, baka pwede namin uh -oh. ibigay sa kanila and then they will uh -oh. start to check kung pwede nila i-incorporate dun sa uh, new modules ng CBMS. So possibly nice. naman po, depende na rin po yung kay PSA. Hello, good afternoon. Yeah. Yes, and ma'am, andito rin po si um, my assistant director, si AD. AD, ma'am. Okay, no, sir. Um, yeah, we would appreciate no, your thoughts as well, is. sir. Oh, Actually, with the, with, the, with the new law now in place, that's part of the trajectory of the ILG. Where okay. We're trying to harmonize the RAPID and the CBMS. Because mm -hmm. if, if you will see, magkadugtong yon. Si, uh -oh. si CBMS can serve as a data source while si rapid naman ay requirements for planning magkadugtong okay. plan. so mm -hmm. we will be integrating all these things and recommend this to P to, to PSA uh being the head for the CBMS yes 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 uh well that's a really welcome development and we look forward to uh you know uh really a, very, a, a smooth implementation of the CBMS law. So what you've mentioned, PSA is the uh, main implementing uh, agency. And with PSA, nandiyan din po ang DICT, you know? Kasi DICT will be in charge of yung data sharing arrangements uh, between government agencies. And then, of course, ang DILG. Okay, let us now uh, go to um, other questions from our WebEx uh, participants and okay 
yung sinabi ko kanina actually it's one of the questions no uh, from okay one of the questions from our uh, webex um uh, uh participant uh -huh. this one is from antonio avila um Sabi niya, I have observed that whenever we talk about development planning, financial planning, particularly revenue generation and forecasting, is not discussed. How can the CBMS be useful for the preparation of financial plans, which are invest, which are important in investment programming? Um, any thoughts from our speakers? Um, okay. Perhaps we can hear from our from our LGU um, discussants, Mayor Mayor Maligaya. Yung paggamit po niyo sa, C, sa, sa CBMS, nagagamit po ba niyo ito? Um, actually, now that that's it's being preparation of financial plans. So, yes. nagagamit po ba niyo? Uh, now that it is being brought up, no. Uh, with with regards to financial plans, yes, nagagamit namin to. Pero with regards to like um pro um um providing strategic uh, strategic uh, revenue generate generating uh, programs and uh, programs in the municipality mm -hmm. parang ngayon pa lang siya nag -e enlighten sa akin oo nga no pwedeng gamitin yung CBMS mm -hmm. for this venue mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so marami talaga siyang uses ano oo parang ngayon pa lang natin fully na uh, na realize yung 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 scope ng kanyang kanyang uses kasi parang ang napaka ano niya napaka versatile itong tool na ito okay let us now go to the next question and this pertains again to the data um that you and your team uh, collected just in okay um and this one is from uh caroline obalde of uh, sorsogon did the study have a disaggregation of results at the provincial or regional level? If yes, which provinces or regions appear to be properly using CBMS as a development tool? And how do you relate the results to their prov to their property situation? Parang hindi ito uh, nagawa sa study, ano? Kasi parang municipalities ang tiningnan nyo talaga. May dis disaggregation ba kayong ginawa, Justine? Um, thank you for that question. No, we did not um, categorize. You have to remember, only 57% of the municipalities said that they use the CBMS. They, they use the so, CBMS. So, oh. so that's about 700 plus only. Um, mm -hmm. And um, we did not um, um, group them by province or by region. Oh. But it's, not but it's, part but of it's the, possible, right? It's possible. It's possible to them. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So that, thank, you, thank, you. Uh, um, thank you very much, Justine, for that. Uh, uh, response okay again this is related to uh to the okay this is again from caroline obalde are th are there lgus that present their cbm as results to the local development council or other development planning uh bodies for validation and participatory analysis is this required in the CBMS, in your experience, uh, sa ginagawa po ngayon ng, ano, let's say, ng uh, Municipality of uh, Carmona, pinepresent po ba niyo ito sa LDC or other uh, planning development bodies for uh, validation and participatory analysis? Um, can we hear from Congresswoman Loyola again, ma'am? Or you may want... Um, Mildred, to answer this. Hello? I'm not going to the question. <laughs> okay, Mildred, you na la. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Uh, Did you hear the question, ma'am? Na narinig po niyo? Yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. Sige po, go ahead. Actually, uh, from the start naman po, pagka po nakuha yung data sa, sa household pa lang, Mm. Pinapresent pa rin po yung data for validation kung tama po sa barangay mm -hmm. level. And then once it has been processed, okay na po yung uh, data, ginagamit na natin. 
sa planning purpose, kailangan po natin din to kasi uh, tinitingnan din po natin yung gaps kasi uh, we have the current reality uh, assessment, di po ba? Nakikita natin ano yung merong data uh, previously at saka po yung ngayon. So, doon pa lang po, ma-assess na po, kaya nga po meron tayong sectoral, multi-sectoral planning. Uh, May kanya-kanya mm -hmm. sector. So, doon pa lang po, yung boses ng lahat ng sector naririnig once you presented the uh, the data and the mm -hmm. analysis. Uh, lahat ng analysis, sabi nga, doon natin ine-extract yung intelligence natin. Yes. Uh, if there is, uh, ito yung uh, situation, ano ang causes nito, ano epekto nito, itong, itong mga ganito nakukuha natin sa sa, sa community and the uh, all sectors, the sectors, no? Uh, pag nasabi nila kung ano yung gaps, ina-analyze natin ngayon, uh, eh, ano ngayon kung meron nito, ano ga, anong, anong mangyayari, ano epekto nito, once na nagkaroon ng ang ganitong sitwasyon. Then after that, doon na tayo papasok ano yung intervention natin, ano magiging strategy natin dito, na tulong-tulong natin pinagtutulungan sa community, uh, multi-sectoral approach, kasi nga, hindi naman tayo nandun sa baba. Yung masasabi ng farmer, hindi masasabi lang nasa business group. Yung masasabi namin sa, sa LGU, hindi, namin, hindi masasabi nang nasa baba. So, lahat kasi may idea from the data na nag-gather from the CBMS, doon nakukuha yung gaps. Lalong maganda kung meron tayong panel data from the very start, makikita mo yung progress ng data. Nang muna, just like in Carmona, from 2008 up to 2017, nakita namin yung poverty, pababa ba o pataas, bakit ganun? Baka yung monitoring is very important. Kasi kung minonitor mo, nakita mo, bakit Despite na meron na tayong program na ganito, bakit ang taas pa rin ng poverty? So we need to analyze bakit saan tayo may mali. Is it the program? Is it the implementation? Or is it the community? Yan po. Kaya kailangan po ang planning is participatory. Hindi po dapat iisa lang ano pa pa. Hindi lang po kaming nasa LG. Thank you Very po. well said. Very well said, uh, Ma'am Mildred. Okay. Let's now go to uh, our next question from one of our Facebook uh, viewers, uh, Mr. Daniel Agustin. And this question is um, addressed to uh, Aleli, Dr. Subrivinas. Aleli, um, as an expert, what are your recommendations so that BARM will make use of the CBMS so that poverty will be addressed in, in BARM where uh, poverty poverty incidence is highest in the country. Any thoughts on this, uh, Aleli? My thoughts, no? BARM is previously a RMM. Actually, I think one of the main issue why CBMS has not been implemented there is because of security reasons. Uh, based on the record that I've checked uh, from the CBMS network records, no? Um, only three out of uh, 100 plus municipalities in ARMM, or not which is now BARM, uh, have implemented CBMS. So I guess uh with with uh, with the problems concerning uh security that prevents them from actually uh in implementing the system itself but i remember there were uh some interest already coming from uh, local chief executives during that time but it's such that uh, maybe the main challenges now is not yet addressed so i think with barm i'm not so sure about some details about uh their uh, governance at the moment no but uh, given that the CBMS Act now is implement, is enacted and the law requires every municipality to actually implement it, I don't think there's there will be an excuse for 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 any municipality because it it's a requirement by the law. Mm -hmm. yes, I'm hoping that uh, despite this the the limit, limitations of the, the barn when it comes to their uh, resources as well. Uh, the the new loan now will be able to actually address that main uh, problem. So I guess that's only my, my two cents. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Shaleli. Okay. Uh, this question is for um, Mayor Maligaya. Mayor Maligaya, this one is from Carlo Jean Arceo. Sabi niya, uh, he noticed in your slide that the LG used the CBMS data for the 4 piece program. However, 4 piece beneficiaries are being targeted using the NHTSPR of the DSWD. Actually, uh, he added, it's also my question to other panelists as CBMS, despite being a monitoring system, is also being used as a targeting system. 
and with this um there is duplication uh with NH NHTSPR and the CBMS. In order to be efficient, do you think it's better for the national government, ESA and the DSWD, to just cooperate and have one system to use for both monitoring and targeting as we are trying to deal with limited resources in the government? Uh, Mayor uh, Maligaya Bautista, may we have your thoughts on this piece? And then we can also get the views of our other um discussions other panelists ma'am yes um of course i um i see a lot of um comments here in the chat box no um uh stating that there is duplicalities um in terms of like the psa in the nhts um uh uh specifically in four piece uh, sa amin po uh yung four piece targets po namin and beneficiaries parang ang nagiging system po sa cbms is nagiging check and balance lang din yung mm -hmm. uh, cbms data CBM Yes. Pero, uh -oh. um, dun pa rin po kami, of course, uh, we respect the NHTS and the mm -hmm. MSWD at sila naman po ang may hawak nun. So, I guess uh, we could uh, brought up to the panel how we could um, collaborate the data and uh, yes. to... to um, for, for us not to duplicate um, our database tools. Thank you very much. If I may uh, get the uh, views of our president, Dr. Celia Reyes, because she has been uh, very much involved in um, in the 40s, uh, conducting, uh, she has conducted numerous researches in the 40s, uh, about the 40s. At, at the same time, she designed the CBMS, ma'am. Uh, yeah. Dr. Cell, yes. Perhaps yeah. it, it's important to clarify the intended, per, intended uses of the CBMS. And of the and uh, vis a vis the NHTS. Yeah, um, when they were discussing the the CBMS Act, uh, the CBMS bill at that time, really one of the selling points for institutionalizing CBMS is to be able to harmonize the data collection activities of different government agencies. So um, the CBMS questionnaire was examined, and also the uh, listahan and questionnaire or the the questionnaire that's being used for the four piece and um it was found out that uh, the questions in the listahan um survey questionnaire is a subset of um mm -hmm. this, uh, cbms questionnaire so all of the information that would be collected um for uh, by dswd could be collected using the cbms data collection instrument and so the the thinking is that once you have institutionalized CBMS, there would be no need to collect the same set of information mm -hmm. from the households another time. And so um, what would be harmonized would be the collection of all of these items of information. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean that um, the SWD cannot use its own um, tool or own formula for identifying who should be beneficiaries of its program. As we all know, it uses um, proxy means test uh, mm -hmm. model, and so it can still come up with its own uh, model and uh, be able to identify who, who are eligible for um, its uh, different programs. But what would be harmonized and what would be avoided would be um, duplication of uh, data collection. Thank you very much, Mamsel. Okay, now let us now go to the next uh, question. We still have a few questions from our uh, participants. And actually, we're supposed to end at 4.30, but uh, we still have uh, some questions to uh, for our, uh, for our uh, uh, panelists. So with uh, their permission, we will have to um, extend our a webinar uh, yeah. for a bit more time, yeah. I, I hope it is okay to, to all of you. Maraming salamat po. Okay, this one is from uh, Cornel. Yes, ma'am. I would like Sarah, to interject the answer. Oh, sure, okay. sure ma'am, go ahead po. Ma'am, we cannot That's hear you that. po. Okay. Medyo choppy po kayo. Hi ma'am. Hello, ma'am. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. 
Yes, I would like to make a uh, short, uh, I would like to sure. mention the sinabi ni Marcelia doon sa listahan okay. ng tsaka CBMS. Although okay. talagang binibigyan natin ng the DSWD has the right to use their own data. Pero ako, ang experience namin, alam niya ni Emil, ni Mildred, sabi namin sa kanila, uh, makipag-ugnayan sa amin dahil may CBMS data kami. And come to think of it, yung mga nagsisurvey sa DSWD sa listahan are not from the local government unit. And admit it or not, merong mga lugar na hindi nila nasa-survey. So, he may mm-hmm. be left out the vulnerable sector. Okay, okay. Even okay. one based from experience. Ewan ko sa ibang local government. Kami nakita namin eh. Doon sa mga beneficiaries ng poor peace. Mm-hmm. How come? Kasi kami dito, pag uh, nag-identify uh, kami ng poor among the poor, tinitingnan talaga namin yung talagang poorest at uh, ginagrados namin yan. So, bakit merong nakakakuha na hindi naman poor? Meaning to say, hindi naabot ng survey ng listahan ng DSWD. Although, maayos naman ang kanilang survey, pero kung hindi nakikipag, uh, hindi talaga galing sa local, kita ko yan eh, madaming na left out. Mm-hmm. So, yun ang nagiging isang problema na dapat uh, i-open up yan sa national government. Thank yes. you. That's a, that's a very good insight, Congresswoman Loyola. Maraming salamat po. Okay. Let's uh, continue with our um, open forum. And okay, this one is from, as I've mentioned earlier, Cornelius David of the DSWD. What are the measures of CBMS to ensure that the data gathered are complete, accurate, and concise? How does the local implementer eliminate political manipulation, such as um, such as identifying non-poor families as uh, primary recipients of local programs? Ma'am, uh, Mayor, Congresswoman Loyola, would you like to um, share your insights or your um, thoughts on this uh, when you were, uh, no? because it was uh, under your leadership that uh, you started, uh, that the municipality of Carmona um, implemented uh, the, the, the CBMS. So, paano po nyo na prevent yung political sa- manipulation ng data? Dito kasi sa amin, uh, pag nag-roll uh, out ng programs ang uh, local government when I was still the mayor, and during the time na si Mayor Roy ang nakaupo, strict talaga yung amin sinasabi na walang politics dito. Pagkatapos ng eleksyon, walang kulay tayong pag-uusapan. Ang barangay captains ay hindi pa pwedeng makailam. Nandyan lang sila to guide. Mm-hmm. At uh, mananagot sa amin talaga kung merong uh, uh, magmamanipulate nitong data ito. Kasi ang amin panon dito, panuntitunan sa aming paglilingkod eh. People empowerment at the forefront where nobody should be left behind. Malinaw yan. Mandatong okay. kinakausap ang lahat ng nasa grassroots na mga leaders, mga political uh, persons namin na talagang sinasabi namin talagang kailangan pantay-pantay tayo sa ating gagawing paglilingkod at uunahin ang vulnerable sectors ng ating community. Thank you very much, Congressman uh, Loyola. Um, Mayor Maligaya, Bautista, would you like anything to add um, in terms of uh, the experience of uh, Batalianes? Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, in our municipality, I think uh, mawawala kasi yung visa ng database tool net. If we insert political um, political uh, how do you call this? Kung mamumuliti ka po tayo. And um, like uh, Congressman Dalia, no, dito po sa bayan namin, uh, I don't li- look into political colors, but uh, to the needs of the people. Kung ano po yung kailangan nila, uh, yun po ang binibigay natin, whether you are color blue or color yellow, wala pong, uh, uh, wala pong pinipili, basta po kailangan ninyo. Thank you very much, ma'am. Okay, this uh, question is from Jason Edward San Juan, one of our WebEx participants. Is it possible that data collection for CBMS be applied as a grant under the People Survival Fund? Well, perhaps this can be explored. And no, we can ask someone probably. Um, kasi in People Survival Fund, yun yun sa ang nag ano yan is the Climate Change Commission and no, the, the CCC. So, pwede nating sigurong Itanong sa kanila yan. Okay, we have other questions from our Facebook viewers. This one is from Merwin Salazar, of um, Executive Director Merwin Salazar of the CEPO. 
And this one is uh, directed to uh, Mayor Maligaya and Dr. Sikat and also Dr. Reyes. In your experience using the CBMS, were you able to determine the effectiveness of your programs in terms of achieving the objectives for which the programs were founded? I ask the question because I believe that while CBMS is a good tool for local development planning and monitoring projects and programs, it is also important that LGUs need to establish an evaluation system that goes with the CBMS. The purpose of the CBM CBMS will be all for naught if there is no evaluation that is done during and after the implementation of programs activities and projects or the PAPs or even in determining what PAPs are the most appropriate in your locality. Okay, and he added that we commend your leadership in using CBMS in your locality, but we know that most LGUs need to be trained to, to understand and appreciate evaluation and how to establish a functional M&E system. Uh, may we hear from you first, uh, Mayor Jasmine, and then we can ask uh, Dr. Sikat and Dr. Reyes after you. Ma'am, uh, please check your microphone. Sorry. Um, as I have mentioned earlier in my presentation, uh, we had uh, last December 11, 2018, uh, we had conducted the Citizen Satisfaction uh, Index System, which is conducted by the Cavite State University and the DILG. And I think um, the rank that we got here uh, comes uh, mainly because of we provide the programs and the services for the people because we know the grassroots needs of these people and uh, we successfully uh, target all the seven different areas like the health, the support to education, social welfare, infrastructure, uh, economic and investment pro promotion and the like. And I think uh, this is the best uh, evaluation for us because um, the people of Magallanes uh, really likes uh, what we are doing in the municipality. And I think um, the our customer, our, the local chief executives and the local government customers are the people, the community. Secondly, um, we also use, uh, we monitor and evaluate our um, our data uh, in uh, in the establishment of our plans, no? Kasi ngayon sinasabi ni Ma'am Mildred kanina na we uh, identify the gaps. So mm -hmm. every time, every year or every three years, uh, we, uh, we accumulate the data on what we are, what, needed to be done in the municipality. Mm -hmm. Ano pa ba yung lacking in terms of social services, uh, in terms of health, education, and in terms of infrastructure. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, Justine, uh, any thoughts on uh, this question? I think it's a question more on the implementation. The question was, how is it used in uh, and monitoring, if I understood Monitoring correctly. and evaluation, evaluation. yes. yes. Uh -huh. Because our study, what we looked at simply was um, as I said, we asked what the commonly used um, development data set tool was, and it just came out to be the, the CBMS. So, mm -hmm. so we did not uh, look into that. Thank you. Okay. Ma'am Sel, since um, Merwin um, uh, mentioned you in his uh, question, may we have your uh, comments, please? Yeah, um, by design, CBMS is uh, supposed to provide inputs in terms of the effectiveness of programs that have been implemented. So when CBMS is conducted regularly, you're able to monitor changes in specific indicators. So, um, for instance, access to water. If in the first round you find that so many households don't have access to water, the local chief executive's response could be, okay, I'm going to provide um, water um, to this mm -hmm. household so don't have access. And so in the next round of CBMS implementation, um, if it was done well, uh, then you should see a reduction in the proportion of yes. houses who don't have access to water. So there are actually some, um, what we call the core local poverty indicators where the interventions could easily be monitored and, and evaluated. Of course, I think we would want to look forward to more sophisticated M&E systems, and I think mm -hmm. that's 
um, and, and the capacity is now there among local government units. So I think that's the next step for um, local government units. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Ma'am Sel, if I may have a follow-up question uh, with regard to um, assessing the uh, our achievement of the SDGs at the local level, do you think the CBMS is an effective tool? Yeah, actually that we have been promoting um, CBMS as a tool for monitoring before the MDGs, but now the SDGs. Why? Because you have, I um, can't remember the exact number now, but I think you have at least 40, um, mm -hmm. indi 30 in core indicators, I in think, indicators. so many SDG mm -hmm. indicators mm -hmm. that's already being monitored in the CBMS. But more importantly, because you cover all the individuals in, in the community, in, in the locality, you're able to come up with information um, that's disaggregated by sex, yes. age group, yeah. ethnic group. Uh -huh. um, and, and so you so have granular data, data, no? Yes, and that's the only way you can actually mm -hmm. achieve that principle of leaving no one behind. Yes, okay. Thank you very much. Sean. That question, uh, by the way, is from Maricel Fernandez, one of our Facebook participants. Okay. Um, Earlier in, in uh, the presentation, I think it was Aleli or uh, one of our LGU discussions. They commented on uh, the uh, the conduct of uh, I think it was Aleli and, and she um, commented on uh, uh, why the C, uh, why the CBM is is uh, conducted every three years. The, the principle or the uh, the theory behind it. And we have a question from Aryan Rodriguez. Uh, sabi niya, since CBMS aids in local development planning and there has been schedule of planning and budgeting in municipality, when will be the best time to conduct the survey? Uh, and he, she's referring to the CBM, CBMS, of course. Is it the start of the local chief executive's term or July of um, election year or at the end of the term, March to April of the election year? Uh, what are your thoughts? On this, uh, okay. Perhaps we can ask our the the ILG uh, uh, panelists, and then we can go to our LGU discussions. Um, Ad Marali or CC Charity? Yes, Charity, please go ahead. Ah, okay. So, siguro, um, I think it's best um pa na umpisahan yung CBMS is before maupo yung next um, CLCE CL local yes. chief executive so kung halimbawa um uupo si mayor by by June or July ng ng 20 mm -hmm. so dapat by um later part ng ng 2021 meron na po tayong data on CBMS kasi this data ito po yung gagamitin ni ni mayor sa pagpaplan mm -hmm. sa sa kanyang mga programa pag pagupo okay thank you very much Baka si Sir Mayor, June. Oh, Sir June? Uh, Lady Marali? Yeah, I agree with the statement of Ms. Chari kanina. Now, it's more strategic to do the CBMF data collection before mag-uumupo si Mayor. Para pag-upo ni Mayor, may mga inputs. Which okay. would serve as um, inputs in the crafting of the of the development trust or priorities of the local chief executive. So it's more strategic to do it before uh, the start of this term. Mm -mm. Okay, thank you very much. Mayor um, Malig Mayor Bautista, Maligaya Bautista, um, yung pag-upo pag ba ninyo, ganyan ang nangyari? Nag-kwanda uh, ka agad ng uh, CBMS? Hello? Oh. Yes, hi. Oh, actually po, uh, yung CBMS, it was started way before 2011. So wala pa. Ah, okay, po. before you. Okay. Yes. Wala pa mm -hmm. po ako. Meron na po kaming CBMS round 1. And mm -hmm. then um 2016, yung po that's the time na ayun po yung first term ko. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, we have uh implemented the round 2. Okay. Round two. Um, CBMS. And I think uh, for all the local government units that are listening right now, no, uh, basta hindi lamang po um, last term na ninyo, dun po kayo mag, mag, uh, mag implement or establish ng CBMS because hindi nyo na po siya magagamit. Yung next administration na po yung makakagamit nito. Pero anyway, um, for the benefit of the community, uh, pwede rin naman po. Yeah. Okay. 
Kasi the, the, the purpose of the CBMS law is really to institutionalize, right? The CBMS to make it really a permanent, a permanent uh, part of, you know, yung, yung um, local development planning. So, hindi lang siya one-off or, you know, certain yeah. number of years lang. Nandun na siya, embedded na siya sa ano, sa, yes, system, sa systems ng, ng LGU. Okay, we have been receiving questions about the CBMS in relation to the Mandanas Law. Alam nyo po, next week, meron po tayong uh, another webinar which will uh, particularly tackle the uh, the Supreme Court uh, uh, the, uh, ruling or the Supreme Court decision on the Mandanas uh, petition. So, siguro po, uh, in the interest of time, we can... We can uh, ask those questions. Anyway, may record naman po kami ng, mga, ng lahat ng questions. Itatanong po natin yung questions na yan sa ating webinar sa isang linggo. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay, this next question is from John Iriberi. Is the CBMS available for us NGOs in the community development sector to be used in our, in organizing our poor communities? Um, Okay, anyone? Um, Ma'am is this is, is the CBMS available for, you know, non-government um, for NGOs? Yeah, um, the local government units actually paid for the implementation of CBMS because the technical assistance that's being provided by the ILG, um, it's uh, through the trainers from the LGD and the regional and provincial trainers and the assistance being provided by um, uh, the CBMS network are, are more of technical assistance, but it's really the, the LGUs who are paying for the implementation. And so they own the data, And but we encourage them to share um, the data, of course, um, with the following the, the confidentiality in the data privacy law. Um, they, but they do share, um, they can, the, the interested parties can actually secure the consent of um, the LGUs if they're interested uh -huh. in the data. And usually the LGUs do provide, do share the data, of course, anonymized, um, um, just following the data privacy law. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ma'am Sel. Okay. Uh, Ma'am uh, Mayor Maligaya, may question po ulit dito from PPP. Uh, PPDO Bataan, kasi uh, kanina tinanong namin sa inyo yung cost ano, of uh, ano, si ano pala ang, uh, si Mayor Maligaya nga, yung, yung sumagot cost of uh, implementing uh, the, the CBMS and you you uh, mentioned a figure if you can again uh, mention, you know say this again for the information of those who were not able to um, catch you so again, po, it depends on the population. No, for us, uh, we have uh, twenty two thousand population. Uh, okay. Only a four class municipality. Uh, we provided and we allocated a budget of one to one point five million. One to yeah. one point five. Uh, one to one point five million for a, a population of uh, twenty two thousand. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, ma'am. Okay, uh, my question daw si uh, Congressman Loyola. We heard that you would like to uh, raise a question po. Go ahead, ma'am. Congresswoman. Congresswoman Loyola. Okay, let's go back to Congressman, uh, Congresswoman Loyola. Uh, Anong ko lang she... sana kung ah, yes, Sige po. may alam kayo kung okay na ang IRR nitong Republic Act 11315? Okay, uh, well, there was a ceremonial signing of the CBMS Act IR, of the uh, CBMS Act uh, implementing rules and regulations ano, uh, for the press release uh, um of of the PSA this was May May 20, 2020, just la just very recently. Uh -huh. It was signed by uh director uh the national statistician uh Dennis Mapa in the presence of uh, Senator Sherwin Gachalian and the Department of the Interior and Local Government Assistant Secretary Marjorie Halushos. 
perhaps uh, the our friends from the BILG can uh, provide us further details. Okay. Um, AB Marali, please. The IR the IRR of the CBMS Act has been signed. Uh, ano po ang next steps nito? Ano po ang pwede nating um, may expect? In terms of um, future activities po. Yeah. Nag-sign na po ang IRR ng, ng batas, the CBMS Act is already signed. Now, um, nag-uusap nag, nag ang uh, yeah, the, the council, the, the DICT, okay. DIMG, and PSA on the critical next steps after the signing of the IRR. So there will be a review of the current uh, tools of the CBMS. Uh, being done by PSA in consultation with the other national government agencies. And then there will be organization of trainers from the different agencies that support. Uh, pero ang isa si ang naka, naka ano lang ngayon is uh, PSA submitted already the, the budget requirements to national government. And hopefully, uh, pag na-approve yun, then the the actions now will start uh, for the implementation of the new law. Thank you very much for those updates, um, A.D. Marali. No? So this one is, um, perhaps we can, I can throw this to um, Mayor Maligaya. No? So Bayawan City conducted a CBMS survey last 2016. By 2022, we are planning to conduct another CBMS survey. Ano po dapat ang ano po ang dapat naming gawin or saan po kami magtatanong regarding sa process sa pag-enroll sa CBMS. So the DILG uh, prob, uh, probably is the most uh, logical agency to to ask about uh, how to uh, do the CBMS. Tama ba? AD Marali? Yeah, we still uh, up to now we still request uh, uh, receive requests from local governments na gustong mag mag embark on the CBMS. However, as I said, until such time na na mas, makasetal ang PSA, the DILG still continues to provide technical assistance to local governments who really want to embark on CBMS. Salamat, AD Marali. Okay. Um this one is from Marjorie Adano Santillan. Uh, the crucial part of the CBMS implementation is the data collection. What strategies did you use to come up with reliable and timely survey. Uh, Mayor Maligaya, any tips? For, for in our municipality, you know, um, yung mga enumerators po namin, we made sure na uh, taga doon po sa barangay mismo. Okay. So at least po, hindi po sila, familiar sila sa lahat ng mga tao na nakatira po doon at uh, no one will be left behind. So, isa po yun sa mga strategy namin. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Mayor. Okay, uh, this one is from Don Vincent Busto, MPDO at, of uh, San Jose Mindoro. There were, there were instances then that we encounter difficulty in CBMS funding so, since we have to play words and terminologies in order for them to be included as part of the 20% LDF. LDIF or GADF or LDRRMF, but eventually slashed. Hence, it was difficult for us to lobby its funding against the general fund. May we suggest that the ILG, DBM, NEDA uh, also issue guidelines that state project implementation of CBMS, including all its project components, as part of projects chargeable against 20% DF of the GOD fund and or the LD. RRMF. Any thoughts on this, uh, A.B. Marali? Um, actually, given the the the, the COVID-19 pandemic, that's the triggering. That's why we are in the process, in partnership with BBM, uh, reviewing the the allowable expenses to be charged under the law of the 20% development fund of local government. So, yun yung titignan namin kung Paano gagawin, okay, paano gagawin that CBMS can be charged against, uh, against the 20% development fund. However, based on the sharing kanina ng ating research uh, conducted, there are LGUs who successfully 
charge their their CBMS activities in the 20% development fund or the 5% uh, DRR funds. Nasa terminology lang yon. If they use the CBMS data as input in the crafting of interventions aligned to the intent of the fund, then it can be done. It can be done. But as I said, we are in the process of reviewing what are the activities to be charged under the 20% development fund. Okay. Th thank you very much, um, A.D. Marali. Our next question is from Pamela Manalo. Our existing local government, our existing local CBMS data of LGUs easy to consolidate at higher levels of government um, for provincial, regional, and national level data. How will the implementation of the CBMS Act with PSA as lead agency change the CBMS already set up in LGUs? For example, in terms of uh, data coverage, any um, thoughts on this, uh, Mamsel? If I may get your insights on this. Yeah, I, I think in terms of um, data that will be collected, mm -hmm. I think we can expect some changes. Even with, um, in the past, uh, up to now, the questionnaire has always been updated, um, updated. every few years. So. Uh, as for instance, as Aleli mentioned, there were no questions on climate change before 2011, but we thought it would be useful to to include already questions on on climate change uh, at that time. And right now, the questionnaire also has some questions on the RRM initiatives, which were not in in there um, before. So I think you could expect some changes um, in in the contents of the questionnaire, but I guess. Um, the core local poverty indicators will remain. Um, they will really have to be um, always fine-tuned to the requirements. Um, um, they will be, have to be uh, adjusted to meet um, uh, emerging demands for, for new data. So, for instance, now I would expect um, it's something that we're piloting. Can we include additional questions, COVID-related questions? covid related. Uh, Or SAP mm -hmm. SAP related questions. So, um, I, I don't see any problem with that. Thank you very much, Mamsel. You mentioned about COVID and others. A question from um, Ray and Estandarte, uh, PPDO of Maguindanao. Sabi niya, we already included CBMS uh, in our investment programming this year. However, due to COVID restrictions, we will have to postpone the implementation schedule early next year. In terms of social preparation, is it okay to push for orientation and multi-sectoral consultations for adoption of CBMS this year, considering the implementation of the CBMS Act? Baka kasi po magkaroon ng duplication or repetition of activities once na mag-implement na po ang, ang national, it will add additional cost for us. Uh, use, um, Director A.D. Uh, Marali, any thoughts on this? Okay, they can start the groundwork now. Towards the mm -hmm. end of the year, pwede naman yun. Kasi ang, ang timeline naman talaga ng PSA is we will uh, do the rollout next year. Next mm -hmm. year, mm -hmm. so the, the market, uh, conducting social marketing with regard to CBMS can be done here uh, today or this, this part of the year. And then even the recruitment of the would be uh, mga enumerators natin can be done uh, within the, within the remaining months of the year but the actual implementation or the rollout can be done next year okay thank you uh ad marali and if you could also uh, shed light to um to uh this question actually this is from Justine because section 5 of the irr states that financial and technical assistance will be provided to carry out provisions of the cbms app so does this mean lgus will not have a budget for this um, siguro, I just share ko lang. Wala, wala sa IRR eh, na PSA oh, oh, eh. However, based mm -hmm. on the presentations made by PSA during the webinar that we conducted last week, last week uh, meron silang budget na ipropropose for the, for the CBMS program for next year. So, ibig sabihin, mm -hmm. uh, local governments, ay wala, hindi na siya mag-invest mag ng ganung kalaking halaga the 1.5 million or 1 million the way we're doing right now so that's part of the um, the, the plan of PSA and hoping at saka sabi naman nila na based on priority uh, their priority 
their priority is uh, the low income LGU, the fourth to sixth mm -hmm. class. So, it would be subsidized by national government. Okay, thank you very much for that, um, AD Marali. And uh, for our last question, um, are there online modules for CBMS? Mari, uh, mahira po kasi mag-provide ng technical assistance nowadays, lalo na po marami nag express ng intention to enroll. And this one is from Rowena Taliti, <laughs> our, our uh, uh, colleague here as, uh, who's been organized, uh, co-organizing, helping us organize part of our webinar team. No? Um, who wants to answer this question? I was surprised by that question. <laughs> ah, okay. It came from whom? Mr. Partido. Ah, okay. It came from uh, Mr. Uh, Partido. Okay. Uh, pinatanong niya kay Weng. Um, anyone who would like to answer this? Ma'am Sel, uh, meron bang mga online modules for CBMS? And how can they uh, access these modules? Um. Wala pa, but um, I think this is the way to go. In fact, I just had a, a conference earlier uh, mm -hmm. uh, this morning on um, okay. alternative ways of collecting data. And I mentioned yeah. that um, just like uh, what we're doing now in PIDS, we're um, trying different uh, remote data collection strategies. So it could be an online survey. It could be through phone interviews. So um, I think that's something, uh, that's the direction that CBMS will be taking um, also in the near future. Well, thank you very much, Mamsel. And uh, before we close the um, open forum, may I uh, ask, uh, may I call on Dr. Sikat, Dr. Sobrevinius, Mayor Maligay and Congressman, Mayor Maligay and Congressman Loyola, in case they have, they have any last words for our viewers. Thank you, uh, Sheila. Uh, as I said last time, now is the opportune time to, especially in the face of adjusting to the new normal, uh, in the face of Mandana's rule to be implemented in 2022, eh, with the new laws that will be affecting local government units like uh, the SGLG and the CBMS Act, now is the opportune time really to enhance planning, implementation of projects, and monitoring and evaluation of LGUs. Um, a huge part of success, as we have heard with the stories earlier from our colleagues, the, 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 the mayors here and the congresswoman, is that governance plays a huge part. So even if the laws are there, governance really plays a huge part. The fact that the fourth class municipality was a repeated recipient of the SGLG can attest to itself and also can budget for the CBMS, though now it will have to be, it will be subsidized, that's good news. So that's it. Uh, let's all take a chance of this opportunity presented to us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Congresswoman Loyola, brief final words for from you. Um, addressing the actual needs of the community is really very challenging. But uh, with the use of a CBMS program, producing a piece of timely information, becomes easier. Kaya I'm encouraging all local chief executive to come and embrace this uh, program, CBMS. Mag, uh, invest kayo sa CBMS. Maraming salamat, Congressman Loyola, and uh, it's really a uh, privilege for us uh, to have you in our webinar today. Uh, Mayor Maligaya, Maligaya Bautista. Um, thank you for having me here again. Um, we see, we now see the impacts of um, not planning ahead of time, especially in this pandemic time. No, and it is very important. Uh, the the role of the local government units here are very important in um, in solving uh, the problems that we are facing right now. Um, specifically this infectious disease and other and others so napaka importante po na, uh, na we have the good foundation of planning and the CBMS database tool is a very useful tool for us local chief executives para po ma, ma kapag prepara tayo ng mas maayos and we can eventually protect and salvage the um, our community and of course um, uh, we respond, we perform um, based on the data that we have. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor Jasmine. Uh, 
Maligaya Bautista. And um, Dr. Aleli Subrevinas, please. Okay, thank you again for inviting me for, to this seminar, to, to this webinar, I, I must say. Um, just, just to highlight again yung results ng study ni na Dr. Uh, uh, Justin, no? uh, I believe we have all realized now the importance of CBMS. Uh, uh, we realize there are problems, there are existing problems that we can uh, address at the moment. With the implementation of CBMS Act, I guess most of the challenges that the LGUs themselves experience can now be addressed. That's that's my I know, my hope, uh, because when I was with CBMS, uh, really uh, our goal when I was there was to have all the LGUs in the Philippines implement CBMS because being a, a reliable source of data for local government units, I think this is the best way to go. No, so at least the CBMS Act is now supporting uh, the national government is now supporting the local governments now. And so I'm hoping that uh, it will be a success for all our LGUs in the future. Thank you. Finally, may I call on our president, Dr. Reyes, having started uh, the CBMS many years ago <laughs> in the 1990s and seeing it grow. Any um, words, Mamsel, words of wisdom that you can share to our audience before we close the open forum? Yeah, it's very heartwarming to to hear um, Congresswoman. Huh? Yeah, it's very heartwarming to hear Congresswoman Loyola and Mayor Bautista um, speak about um, how they ha they're using CBMS to improve the lives of their constituents. So I think um, that's um, very rewarding experience for a PIDS research output. So um, thank you. Maraming salamat, Charity. Would you like to say something? Charity, if you're if you're still there. Yes, uh, uh, yes, uh, ma'am. So, um, I'm encouraging all LGUs out there, um, dun sa wala pag CBMS to in to embrace CBMS. Kasi, um, hearing all those um experiences from our researchers sa mga LGUs, na talagang malaking tulong yung, yung CBMS para sa pag implement ng mga programs sa kanila at ma identify kung sino talaga yung mga eligible beneficiaries. So, so with the with the law, so I think um way to go na talaga tayo ng CBMS po. It's it's a way to help help our constituent na mag-improve yung kanilang um, poverty situation. Thank you. Maraming salamat. Maraming salamat sa iyo, Charity and Mildred, of course. May we have a few words from you? Yes. Please turn on your mic. Yes, please. Three words. Uh, Co-planners po. Para mapadali ang buhay natin, mag-CBMS tayo. <laughs> and besides, sana uh, supportahan ng mga LCEs, nakilang po talaga ako at uh, supportive po ang uh, mayor and congresswoman ko. So sana uh, call for the mayors na kahit gaano ka gusto ng mga planners na uh, magkaroon ng CBMS kung walang support ng mga local chief executive, paliwala po. At saka mm -hmm. sabi ko sa inyo para mapadali buhay natin, mapadali ating trabaho, mag-CBMS po tayo. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. And of course, Kata, it's also nice to uh, see you uh, once again. Um, any any uh, thing, any any words that you would like to share with our um, core research, mga core researchers, Moren? Kata? Yes. Yeah, I would just like to thank you. Shared research. of the three the series of researches that we have done for the LGSF and I hope um, these researches will be instrumental especially in those uh, LGUs that yet to realize the importance of CBMS in, the, in their local planning. Thank you very much. Thank you very much too. Okay, so we're now closing the open forum at this point. Please join me in thanking all our presenters, Dr. Justin Sikat, Ms. Catherine Adaro, our discussants, Dr. Aleli Subrevinas, Congressman Dali Loyola, and Mayor Jasmine Maligaya Bautista. I would also like to thank Ms. Mildred Politica Sean, Dr. Celia Reyes, uh, Ms. Charity Agbayani, and of course, A.D. Uh, Marali for joining our Q&A panel of speakers. Let's give all of them a big virtual clap.
And thanks to all of you for your active participation. Now let us go to the results of our poll on whether you agree or disagree to the statement. To encourage more regular conduct of the CBMS data collection, the government should add CBMS to the seal of good local governance criteria. So what is our result? Um, Gwen? Okay, so uh, a total of 302 WebEx participants um, join our poll, and out of 302, 256 agree that um, we should uh, add the CBMS to the seal of local governance criteria. I hope um, use, maging useful itong poll natin sa ating mga uh, implementers ng ng, ng CBMS. Okay, uh, friends, um, I now call on the LGD Assistant Director Alfonso Morali for the closing remarks. Good afternoon, everyone. Magandang hapon po muli sa ating lahat. Uh, on behalf of the DILG Secretary Eduardo Antonio, I would like to thank everyone who is able to join the last session of the three parts PIDS DILG webinar series on promoting uh, good local governance in the Philippines. We hope that this webinar series provided all of us with a better understanding of the government programs and mechanisms being studied to further improve its responsiveness and effectiveness. I would like to extend our sincere appreciation to our experts and panelists, Dr. Justine Jokno, Ms. Catherine Adaro, uh, Dr. Aleli Sobrevinas, and Ms. Mildred uh, Purificacion for sharing their insights and perspective on the community-based monitoring system as a planning tool. A special thanks to Congresswoman Dalia Loyola of Carmona Cavite and the Honorable Mayor Jasmine Maligaya Bautista of Magallanes Cavite who shared their experiences in the utilization of CBMS information to support implementation of LGU initiatives to address COVID-19. For all the participants who took time out to listen the study results, we hope that this webinar session provided you with takeaways as we endeavor to inspire the stakeholders' involvement in government programs, processes, and systems such as the CBMA. Primarily introduced as poverty diagnostic tool in 2003, now the CBMS has been adopted by 1,111 or 75% of all municipalities and 114 or 78% of all cities located in 78 provinces nationwide, 36 or 44%, which are province-wide. Uh, CBMS does of covers 31,485 or 75% of all barangays in the country. It is worthy to note that LGU adoption of the tool, despite its being a demand-driven, is in recognition of the strategic value of CBMS as a planning and decision-making tool. The study is timely as the government gears for the nationwide implementation of the CBMS with the recent passage of Republic Act 11315 for the CBMS Act of 2019 and the realization brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic. The urgent need to profile constituencies and identify beneficiaries to expedite government response and support interventions amid COVID-19 and discourse the need for reliable data and information. While funds for the social amelioration program have been made available, identification of program beneficiaries uh, proves very difficult. The determination of the most vulnerable and affected individuals are considered by the lack of information aggravated by hampered mobility due to the imposition of the enhanced community quarantine in some areas of the country. The utility of CBMS in the design and implementation of the LGU initiatives for COVID-19 was attested by the sharing of the two LGUs in Cavite. The findings and recommendations of this study as shared by the LGU experiences and perspective provides valuable inputs that may be considered in the further enhancement of the CBMS that is to be institutionalized pursuant to the CBMS Act 
much can be learned from this study result. We hope that today's session had sparked interest and increased your appreciation on the importance of maintaining and updating LGU databases for evidence plans that are responsive and, and inclusive. We do hope that this study can trigger the enhancement of the CBMS to increase its effectiveness as a local planning tool. In closing, let me again express our, uh, our deepest appreciation to everyone who made the conduct of this learning session possible. To our partner, the Philippine Institute for Development Studies, for their dedication and diligence in putting together this webinar series. To the resource speakers and panel of reactors for sharing their guidance, knowledge, and expertise. To the local chief executives and functionaries present for their interest and continuing support in our endeavor to continuously improve and increase responsiveness of government program. And also to all of us present here who believes that changes and reforms can more effectively be instituted through evidence-based studies enriched by the perspective of practitioners and stakeholders. Thank you all for your participation. Be vigilant and stay safe, everyone. Muli, on behalf of the department and the partners, magandang hapon at maraming salamat sa inyong lahat. Thank you very much, um, A.D. Marali of uh, the DILG. Before we finally close, we have some reminders. Many of you have been asking us about uh, the, power, the presentations uh, delivered in today's webinar. Well, you can access the presentations from our website. Uh, flash on the screen is the link, but don't worry because we will email you the link after the webinar. Please also answer the feedback survey that will pop in your screen after this webinar, and we will email. We will also email you the link after the event. Uh, your comments and uh, suggestions are important to us to improve our weekly webinars. And please regularly visit our website when you, where you can find all our uh, knowledge uh, products as well as uh, schedules of our uh, events. And of course, uh, please um, uh, visit our social media pages. We have a Facebook account. Thanks to all who have, uh, who have uh, watched us on Facebook. We have uh, more than uh, a while ago, I, I checked, we have more than around more than 400, no, more than 400 uh, Facebook viewers. While on um, WebEx, we have we have 400, so nearly a thousand of uh, viewers, a thousand participants in today's webinar. Maraming salamat po. And we have also we also have a Twitter account where, where we do live tweeting of all our events. And finally, we would like to acknowledge the various organizations from. Government, academic, civil society, business, and international development community who join us today. You can see uh, the names of these offices on the screen. Okay, and next week on August 20, we will talk about another interesting topic, which is a PIDS study conducted by uh, Dr. Um, Rosario Manasan on the Supreme Court uh, decision on the Mandanus petition regarding the computation of the LGUs internal revenue allotment or, or the uh, era. And Dr. Manasan will discuss uh, the uh, possible sources of financing for the expected increase in the LGU's IRA. And we do hope you could join us again next week. So friends, this ends our webinar for this week. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay informed. Maraming maraming salamat po. And again to the DILG, thank you very much for collaborating with us in this webinar series. Thank you. Bye-bye, Paul.